Hey, get up! Who are you? What are you doing in my room? What? Excuse me? Who are you? This is my room. This guy was totally crazy. He insisted this was his room, even though I picked the key up from reception just two hours ago. What do you mean you got the key? I checked in first and just left the key at the reception desk to go out and buy some stuff. Whatever. I like the beach view here, so I'm staying. Unbelievable! Then he pulled out his phone and called reception. Okay, so I'm Liana, and I'm in the tropical paradise of Bali. My dream vacation wasn't off to a great start, thanks to this Charles guy trying to kick me out of my perfect beach view bungalow. Poof! Okay, now listen. They admit they gave you the wrong key. He pointed at his phone. Now, go back to reception, get the right one, and they'll probably give you a free treatment in the spa or something as compensation. No chance. I frowned at him. I like this room. How about you leave and go and enjoy a free spa treatment or whatever? Hell no! He growled at me. I paid for it, so I'm staying put. After that, we continued to quarrel until I felt a pain in my chest. And the next thing I knew, I'd fainted. Ugh. I guess it was just far too hot here for arguing. He put a pillow under my head and said, Miss, you can stop pretending now. Wake up. I had a feeling he was staring at me, but I didn't move. Fine. Keep on playing your little pretend games. But I'm not leaving this room either. Ah, oh, silence. He must have given up. But then I felt a weight next to me on the bed. Without a second thought, I opened my eyes and leaped off the bed. Oh, turns out he wasn't trying to harm me. Instead, he was just sitting on the side and opening his laptop. Oops. He rolled his eyes, told me to go, and then started typing away. I swished my hair back, then said, In your dreams? Now, I'm off to enjoy this sunny day. When I come back, I don't want to see your face. After that, I left and spent the rest of the day relaxing on the beach. Bali was just so beautiful. At night, I returned to the bungalow and was ready to fall into bed. Hello, I said as I walked inside. Whoa, he wasn't there. I'd won the Battle of the Bungalows. I used the last of my energy jumping up and down on the bed and singing out, He left, I win, he's a loser, I'm a winner. Then I curled up into bed and started to drift off. Smash! I jolted upright. The window had been broken, and lingering at the foot of my bed was a tall, dark figure. I screamed at the top of my lungs, but they lunged forward and covered my mouth with their hands. Shut up! They whispered in my ear, then pulled their mask off. It was Charles! Confused, I blurted out, What the? Why did you break the window? Quick, grab your things. I pushed him off me and sat there with folded arms. Nice try, but if this is your way of kicking me out, it won't work. I'm not leaving. Suddenly, another man entered the room. Charles placed his mask back on and quickly grabbed the lamp from the bedside table and threw it at the man. I grabbed my bag in a panic while Charles took something from his backpack and then he led me out of the room. We took the back road out of the bungalow and headed into the forest. Where are we going and who is he? I questioned, but he remained silent. Say something. What's going on? Shut up for a minute. Now, I'll take you to the airport to leave this island. Charles grumbled. It was pitch black, and I was trampling through the forest in flip-flops. Ugh! Then, to make it even worse, I tripped over a branch and busted my knee. Great! He lowered his back and said, Get on. I was a bit surprised at first. Hmm, maybe he wasn't as mean as I first thought. After a while, he decided we should rest in the forest till dawn. Charles fell asleep the second he hit the ground. I couldn't sleep, and then I thought back on the incident in the bungalow. Thinking about it... I remember Charles grabbing something from his bag. So I crept over to him and slowly reached for his pocket to see what it was. Suddenly, he grabbed my arm tightly. 
Charles, let me go! I hissed out. My arm started to hurt. Ouch! Look, this is a dangerous business I'm in, he said as he let go of me. I'm trying to keep us both safe. Okay, I could really see worry in his eyes, so I muttered out, fine, then rubbed my arm. After a ridiculously uncomfortable night of zero sleep, he nudged me at dawn and told me to start walking. He took my hand and led me forward. I guess it was nice that he was so focused on protecting me, but, er, why did he keep looking at his phone? Um, are we lost? I asked. He kept his eyes on the screen and shook his head. Then he led me into the other direction, and then another. Yep, we were so lost. After what felt like hours of walking in circles, I slumped down on a rock and pulled a water bottle out of my bag. Let's just find the hotel, I suggested. No, we can't. Going back is more dangerous. But, fine. Can you at least tell me why we're sweating our butts off out here? I suppose I've implemented you, he sighed out. Still, you have to take this to your grave. I won't tell. Promise. Through after this, he took a USB stick out of his pocket. The president of the company I work for is carrying out illegal activities, and this is proof. Whoa, you're like James Bond! I smiled as I passed him the water bottle. Hardly. He laughed. Then he thanked me as he took the water and drank half of it without hesitation, then offered me the rest. He told me he was working for another company and had been sent in to investigate. So, you're betraying the president? I asked, skeptically. Kind of. Yes. By the way, I know you just wanted a nice vacation, but I've accidentally dragged you into this mess. I'm so sorry. Don't worry. I guess this is kind of exciting. But this is the summer getaway with the most insects I've ever had. I swatted a mosquito away. I heard him laugh, but hang on. Why was he all blurry? I slurred out. Uh, is your he head heavy? Then I saw him faint in front of me, and a few seconds later, the world turned black. I flickered open my eyes. My head hurt. I was tied to a chair. And so was Charles. There were some scary-looking guys staring at us. Oh no, this couldn't be good. One man walked over to Charles and in a stern tone said, Charles, hand over the USB, and no one gets hurt. I don't know anything about a USB, he muttered out. I don't want to give out threats with her here. But if you insist, one of the bodyguards walked towards me, grabbed my hair and pulled it backward. If you don't find value in her life, just keep it and watch her die. Stop! Leave her out of this! I don't have the USB. I dropped it somewhere in the forest. Then he turned to me. I'm so sorry I got you into this. The man sneered. Stop being so emotional, Charles. It doesn't suit you. I was shaking with fear as the man pulled something out from his back and pointed at me. Last chance, Charles? He shouted out, No! It's in her pocket! He must have snuck it in there when we were in the forest. Did he really believe that I would escape and expose the evidence? Then... <laughs> Cut! Good job, guys! We should be nominated for an Oscar award after this! I joked while the men kneeled down and untied me. About time... I said snidely, as I took the USB out of my pocket and began spinning it with my fingers. I peered down at Charles and smirked. Thanks for protecting me and everything, but it turns out I have what I needed. What? Who are you? Charles asked in shock. So I put him out of his misery and told him everything. Yeah, I'm the daughter of the company's president the same said company that he stole top-secret information from. My father asked me to go and find him, 
The wrong reception key was a setup, and my water bottle has a mild sedative in it. You don't understand. What your father did was illegal, he insisted. I rolled my eyes. Yeah, yeah, whatever you say. I started walking away. Please, see for yourself. Look at the USB. I chewed on my lip. Poor Charles. He was no match for me or my father. Soon, we'd all be on a plane and flying back to the U.S., and then he would pay for what he did. Well, that was a job well done. So now it was time to relax with a glass of champagne. After all, I deserved it. One simple extraction back home, and my father's company would be saved. And Daddy's little girl would get a pat on the shoulder for yet another job well done. Hooray! But I must say, I kind of pity Charles, being a pawn in somebody else's game. He was really nice, and clever too, but not enough to see all this coming, apparently. I took the USB out of my pocket and stared at it. But what secrets did my father keep? We didn't have anything fishy, right? My father did talk a lot about how hard he worked and how honestly he conducted himself. So why did he specifically ask me not to peek at the file? Hmm. A little look wouldn't hurt, right? I know, I know. It's not very good of me to disobey my father, but come on, I'm his daughter. I'm set to take over from him anyways. So consider this a double check, eh? Just to be sure. <gasps> I regret looking at that file. I truly do, as the truth was unbearable. It turns out, my father had been lying to me from the very beginning, so Charles was actually telling the truth. He was indeed stealing dirty secrets from my father to bring it to the light. Ironic, isn't it? I laughed at him for being so gullible and believed the lies about my father's company. Well, it was me who got lied to. These truths were hard to swallow. I bore the legacy of a lifetime of scamming and cheating. No, I didn't want to live like that. It was just so wrong. As I delivered both the USB and Charles to my father, I knew what I needed to do. So I held the USB out to my father and said, Daddy, I looked at it, so I now know everything. Please stop. Liana, so your father turned himself in and will be in jail for a while. So, what do you plan on doing with the company? I was quiet for a moment. This was a big question. Should I continue with my father's business or put an end to it once and for all? I thought back to the day when I confronted my father. But princess, I did it all for you. It's your legacy. I don't want to live with dirty money, dad. You've always been my hero, but now I'm just ashamed of you. His face fell, and I saw the sadness in his eyes. Seeing my father like that was the worst feeling in the world. Then it looked like he realized something. My father quietly nodded, handed me the president of the company seal, and sadly left the room. I'm afraid that I would repeat my father's mistake. So, taking a deep breath... I looked the journalist directly in the eyes and assertively said, After careful consideration, I've decided to close the company. After the conference, I was on my way out of the building when Charles caught up with me and asked, Well, Liana, what will you do now? I shrugged. I don't know. I suppose anything is possible. Although, I do need a place to stay first. I can't return to mine. I can't bear it. Well, um, if you'd like, you could stay with me. Charles smiled at me. Yeah, I'd like that. Then grinning, I added, As long as you don't try to kick me out this time, or drag me through a forest. I hate what my father did, but in the end, he did own up to his crimes and is paying the price. As for me, I was just going to take one day at a time and see where life took me. And if that just so happened to involve a certain James Bond wannabe, then so be it.
Hey, I'm Kirsty, and I have an identical twin sister called Arabelle. We didn't have a normal upbringing, as our mom abandoned us at an orphanage when we were six. We have our mom's dark blue eyes. That's pretty much all I remember about her. I'm not fully sure why she gave us up. I guess she was young and just couldn't cope. As little kids, my sister and I were close. We used to fool the other kids and the nuns into thinking that we were each other. Arabelle always wore a pink bow in her hair, so we'd both wear one and freak the kids out by double-crossing them in the corridors. Those were good times. But when we got older, everything has changed. I started to become green with envy in Arabelle. Everyone always liked her more than me. The nuns called her Little Cat, and every kid kept surrounding her like she was a sparkling star or something. They all thought she was so sweet and polite. This annoyed me because I knew the real her and she wasn't sweet at all, if not a completely fake girl, and she just knew exactly what to say and do to get the most from people. Then, when we were 12, a lot had been happening that completely changed our lives. The orphanage had financial problems that could not be saved. Our nuns loved us so much that they didn't want to lose any of us, but they had no choice but to allow the social organization to find us adoptive parents. The nuns didn't want my sister and I to be apart, so they sent us to two families in the same town. But the god of justice must be blind as usual. Arabelle was way luckier than me. She was adopted by a wealthier family. My parents loved me anyway, but, well, she received all the best things, and that was just not fair. We went to the same school and I was so sick of listening to her bragging. When we were at the orphanage, we used to wear the same kind of clothes, but now things were different. Arabelle always stayed in style wearing the most beautiful clothes. So while although we are identical twin sisters, whenever we stand next to each other, she would be like a queen and I would be a maid. She easily got everything I ever wished for. Princess bed, a large window with a sea view, piano and ballet classes, and an amazing mom and dad. She talked about it all the time, and I got sick hearing it. It seemed like all of the greatest things were not enough for her. She didn't appreciate what they gave her and just always wanted more. If I were her, I would enjoy that dream life with gratitude and respect everything I got. Life was so unfair. Why did Arabelle always have the best while a girl like me was suffering from the day I was born? Adopting one part of a twin made our two new families close. My new family was always visiting Arabelle's big house for barbecues and nice dinners. To be honest, I did not want to go there at all. It was not a simple family meeting. It was just an event for her to show up. Her parents were so nice, and just by looking at the way they treated her, I could tell that they loved her so much. They often patted her head and called her puppy. Arabelle acted all sweet. Then, behind their backs, she said this nickname made her feel sick, as she wasn't five. No one seemed to realize the truth. Arabelle was absolutely not as cute as they ever thought. She actually was kind of insolent, haughty, boastful girl, and most of all, she was a fake. I remember one time when her mother's birthday party was taking place. Her mom looked stunning in that gorgeous dress, and people in the room just stayed silent for a while to show their impressing. Arabelle pretended to be cute and gave tons of compliments to her mom, but as soon as her mom turned her back on us, Arabelle whispered to me, Look at her stupid smile. She is thinking that she really is beautiful, while well, everyone knows that I'm the one who looks stunning here. I was so sick of her double life. She was so lucky living that great life, but she had no appreciation for what she already had. And she was so fake. One time, I tried to unmask her true colors. I tried to tell my parents and our mutual friend about how she'd acted behind their backs, but they never believed me and just told me to stop being mean and selfish. They didn't understand a thing about her real version and even scolded me. I was the one who deserved that life, not that fake loser girl. That was when I decided to make a bigger plan. I wanted to replace Arabelle and live her life. I started staring at her work and copied her handwriting. I practiced imitating her voice. We sounded pretty similar, so this was easy. I secretly followed her and her lame friends at school so that I could learn all about their hobbies and habits. But my family was not as wealthy as theirs. I could only stand outside the restaurant, the clothing store, or the cinema. 
Watching Arabelle enjoy the good life just made my determination grow. When our families met up, I made an effort to get to know her parents more. Her mom likes playing the piano, and her dad likes taking care of his bonsai trees. Her mom can't eat seafood, and her dad is allergic to peanut butter. I jotted down every little detail about her life in my planning book. There were a lot of things I needed to learn until I was fully confident that I could become a second Arabelle and successfully replace her. But then, something suddenly happened that made me speed up my plan. This boy called Milo I liked at school started flirting with my sister. And she flirted back! She knew I liked him, but this didn't stop her from agreeing to go on a date with him. She was such a demon! At this point, I couldn't stand her walking around and stealing all the best things I've ever wanted in my life. I had a plan. Back when I was in the orphanage, there was a man who often came to us and said impolitely to the nuns that they should sell him some children to solve their financial worries. Of course, the nuns refused him and kicked him out. He continued to come over a couple of times, and once he gave us his phone number, saying that if any of us got into trouble, we could find him. Then the nun showed up and threatened to call the cops. Well, that was the last time I saw him. I always kept that number because I knew there would be a day I would need it. And that day finally came. I called him and we came up with a plan to solve my Arabelle issue. He sent her an anonymous message telling her to come to a secluded corner in the park to find out some juicy gossip about Milo. Of course, my nosy sister agreed. The man promised my sister would be sent to another place to work to help him earn money, and she wouldn't be harmed. I left a letter at home saying I'd had enough of the poor life and I'd found a better place to go. I told my parents not to be sad and not to look for me. I hid in a corner of the park and waited for my sister to appear. Then, when they took her, I could easily hop into her life and replace her. There would be no more Kirsty anymore, as I would perfectly be back as Arabelle. Well, the better version of her. Suddenly, I saw a black car stop in the distance. Two tattooed guys got out of the car. I could see guns in their back. They stopped for a moment to wet a hanky with some liquid thing. This didn't feel right. I knew that this was going way too far. They would hurt my sister, and I was the one who was participating in this sin, and I knew that I would live in guilt for the rest of my life if I ever let it happen. I immediately ran out from where I was hiding, grabbed my sister's hand, and pulled her away. I heard their footsteps right behind us, so I ran as fast as possible to the crowd of people and screamed loudly at the same time to let people around pay attention to us. The other two men probably gave up when we ran into the crowd. After we got back to her home, I told her that I happened to be walking past and overheard the guy saying they were going to kidnap her. Then I just ran to reach her as fast as possible without thinking. She hugged me and thanked me for saving her life. She said that she always thought that I didn't like her, and she used to feel that way about me, too. Wow. That moment she came clear that she used to think that I was just a gross, dirty girl and didn't deserve to be around her, and she from time to time tried to pretend herself in front of me just to make me jealous. She was so sorry for her selfish mind and promised to change her character for me. I also told her that sometimes I became so mean because of envy, but facing this dangerous situation made me realize how much she means to me, and I will not let jealousy blind me anymore. Turns out, living a great life was that simple. We just need to talk straight and openly with each other to solve the problems between us. As for my parents, they read the letter I left them and got upset. We had a good talk and I realized I was being the ungrateful one. Yes, so they didn't have as much money as Arabelle's family did, but they were good people who cared about me. Arabelle hadn't been the only selfish one. I'd been selfish too. Life's good, and Arabelle and I are getting on better than ever. Still, the guilt from what I planned eats me up. Should I come clean about what really happened, or should I keep it a secret and carry on like normal? I mean, it's not like anyone was hurt, right? Yes, it's me, Kate, here again. When I traded places with my doppelganger to avoid being stuck in some ghastly summer school, I didn't expect to end up penniless and having to work in some dusty old homestay. But I suppose it wasn't all bad, as I got to meet Bond. So imagine my surprise when I discovered 
that not only was he a runaway rich kid like me, but I also caught him hanging out with... moi. Well, the other me. Ugh! I hired her to pretend to be me, not to be with my man! Um, looks like it was time to return to my normal life. Miss, without a letter of invitation, I can't let you in. Are you kidding me? Why do I need an invitation to enter my own home? How could they not recognize me? Right at that moment, Clara gracefully got out of a luxury car and entered my house. I shouted over to her, but on seeing me, she gave me a confused look. Then she whispered something to the security guard and went straight inside. Sorry, Miss Kate doesn't know you. Please leave. Huh? How dare she? She wasn't Miss Kate. I was. Did she really think she could treat me like this? Ugh! I'd show her who the real rich girl was. But as I was leaving, I caught a glimpse of myself in a car window. Oh my gosh, I looked horrendous. My once bouncy curls, perfectly made up face, and glamorous clothing were no more. Instead, I had a greasy ponytail, my skin was completely bare, and I was in worn old clothes. No wonder the security guards didn't recognize me. I barely recognized my own self. Well, well, well. How comfortable it is to be back in my room, doll up again, and just take back what's mine. How did you get in here? This is my room, remember? I can run away by myself, so you bet I can sneak back into my own room. Listen here, fake me. Mission's over. It's time you left. What mission? Are you crazy? Get your filthy hands off my stuff! Wow, immerse yourself in the role much, huh? Enough. Now give me my life back. What if I don't? Don't you dare. You think my parents won't recognize me? Seeing as I've been impersonating you for an entire month without question, I doubt it. Besides, they're on a month-long business trip in Dubai. So, who will help you now, huh? O-M-G. She was so arrogant, unruly, and obnoxious. Worst of all, she reminded me of someone. Me! Well, the old me. Why didn't I realize before how awful I actually was? Ignoring Clara's defiant face, I took out my phone and made a FaceTime call to my parents. They had to spot it was me straight away, right? Wrong. They gave us both looks of shocked confusion, and they couldn't seem to tell us apart. So they told the two of us to stay at home for the time being while they made arrangements to come back. Huh, is it that hard to distinguish your own daughter from a hick? But anyway, she'll be out of here soon enough. The next morning, we went back to school. Claire looked so trashy in her tiny miniskirt. Jeez, this wasn't a nightclub. Oh, Kate, you look outstanding. Where did you buy it from? <laughs> That's it. My friends will always be able to tell me apart from a fraud. But hang on. No! They were moving toward... Clara! Huh? Are they actually praising her? Wow, there's another Kate here, but it's a faulty version. A lame one. <laughs> my panicked feeling increased as all my friends and Clara burst out laughing. You guys don't recognize me? I'm the real Kate, the one you all idolize, the trendsetter around here. Everyone looked at me in bewilderment and then back to Clara. Look at her pathetic appearance. She's just trying to be a copy of me. After that, Clara and her friends left. Jeez, all it took was one summer away for Clara to turn into me. Ugh, why doesn't anyone recognize me? Seeing Clara living my life with my friends was driving me crazy. I was now seen as the copycat version of my own self. Ugh, no way was I losing to this crafty charlatan. So the next day... I decided to show everyone how charismatic I was. After all, form is temporary, but class is permanent. And soon, everyone would realize who the real Kate was, right? <laughs>
I waited until Claire was out of the way. Then I went over to my group and started recalling some of our old stories that only the real me could possibly know. When Clara returned, oh my, she looked furious. <laughs> One day, when I just entered the cafeteria, I saw my group making a nerdy girl run errands for them. Poof, your mother is the school's measly janitor. So you too are just our dog's body. Now hurry up and go get us some ketchup. When the girl was bringing it to them, one of them tripped her foot and made her face fall down on the plate of sauce. The whole group burst into laughter. I rushed to help her up and scowled at the clique chic girls. <sighs> they may have looked stylish, but beneath it all, they were monsters. But worst of all, it was my fault, as it was my group. I'd basically created them. What's wrong with her mom being a janitor? That doesn't mean she has to serve you guys. As I can see, all of your legs and arms are working fine. So go get stuff yourself. Wow, look who it is. Do you all believe she's just a lousy replica of mine now? The true clique chic Kate wouldn't blurt out such nonsense. Clique chic all looked me up and down, then gave me disgusted looks. Too much of a saint. What a hypocrite. Kate would never say that. Obviously, she's the fake one. Those whispers made me so angry that I turned as red as the ketchup. Fine, pretend to be me all you want. But you and I both know I'm the real me. And I'm better than ever. You won't be able to keep up that act for much longer. And then to the surprise of the others, I stormed off. That night, social media was awash with my news. Can you believe I was actually being mocked for being the copycat while Clara was being praised? Talk about ridiculous. I scrolled through my old photos and scanned over some of the thousands of likes and compliments. I'd lived in the admiration of everyone. Ugh. Maybe I needed to go back to being the arrogant and snobby old Kate, and then everything would be over. Right? <sighs> Only, I couldn't do it. I couldn't be that heartless and selfish version of myself anymore. So how could I end this whole mess of my own making? Ah, there was another way. If there's only one Kate who showed up, there wouldn't be any more fakers. Oh, seems like it's going to be a really good day at school today. But such a shame that our sweet Clara might not be able to join us. Everyone greeted me warmly as they thought that the imposter who was smeared on social media yesterday had been too embarrassed to show her face. Even so, I didn't want to hang out with these stuck-up mean girls anymore. The clique chic group should be disbanded. As I was deep in thoughts, out of nowhere, a nerd blocked my way with a bouquet of flowers. He timidly held them out to me and people began buzzing and pointing. The girls in the group took pictures of him and urged me forward. That's our Kate with her irresistible charms. <laughs> someone's essay's ready for next week. I hesitated, not knowing what to say. I didn't want to accept love from someone I didn't like. People started to frown at my silence. Then a few voices of doubt arose. Why doesn't she accept the bouquet as usual? Perhaps she's not? I saw red. Suddenly, I found this whole pretending to flirt with someone just to have them do our homework absurd. And above all else, it wasn't fair to him. You don't have the guts to do it, do you? Because you're not Kate. Startled, I turned around to see Clara taking the bouquet of flowers from the nerd's hand. I snatched it back angrily. He likes me, not you. He likes Kate, and I'm Kate. That Clara was just so shameless to say that. Did she really think she could be me? Did she think being mean and snobby made her the it girl? How shallow of her. Yes, if it was Kate from the past, I would have received that bouquet and made him do my homework. But the present Kate won't do that. Do it yourself. Stop relying on others to do everything for you. As for you, Clara, let me tell you this. Despite your best efforts, you'll never be me. Once a liar, always a liar, you counterfeit. I was done here. I was the real me. 
and if they couldn't see that, then whatever. So I walked away. Suddenly, a hand pulled me back. It was the nerd. Sorry, but I really don't like you in that way. You really don't have feelings for me? Are you sure? Upon his words, he took off his wig, glasses, and the mole on his face. Bond? Is it really you? I was so shocked that I couldn't believe my eyes. Bond handed me the bouquet and said, You won't say no, will you? Of course, how could I say no? I led him to an empty classroom to talk. Um, why are you here? And what's with the disguise? After I left the homestay, I went back home. My parents did what they always do, and tried to make out like money could solve everything by throwing an extravagant party. I was lingering out of the way when, to my surprise, you walked in with your family. Huh? What party? Oh, he must mean Clara. He continued, I went over to talk to you, but you acted like you'd never met me before, so it didn't take me long to work out this girl wasn't you. I was worried, so I called the homestay and they said you'd left. Determined to solve this mystery, I went to your school and found everyone was in a frenzy, as out of nowhere two Kates had appeared. Both of them were it girls and nothing like the homestay Kate I knew, so in order to suss out the real one, I disguised myself. And my plan worked, as here you are. You're such a trickster! <laughs> but I still have one question. Why did you suddenly leave the homestay that day? So, turns out his passion for marine life led him to run away from his disapproving parents and go to a coastal homestay. Only, when he realized from the newspaper that his parents were looking for him, he didn't want to get the homestay into trouble so he returned home. You should have at least said goodbye to me. I was so down when you left like that. Did you know that? Kate, I'm truly sorry. I never meant to upset you. Actually, I'm kinda crazy about you. After that, Bond drove me home. And guess what? Looks like my parents were back earlier than expected. As for the fake Clara, She'd already fled the scene with a load of my clothes and makeup. But, ugh, whatever. At least she'd finally gone. So, what now? Well, I'm dating Bond, and I'm so happy with him. At weekends, I go to the coast and help him with his marine animal research, which is actually a lot of fun. And I don't even mind having salty air lips. <laughs> I never take my parents for granted anymore and I never force other students to carry out dumb errands for me. And of course, clique chic was no longer a thing. Everyone at school had grown used to the new and improved version of me. Obviously, I'll always be the it girl who sets the trends, but only the decent ones. Hi guys, it's me, Claire. So tomorrow is gonna be super exciting. I'm putting my life in your hands, literally, as I'm gonna be doing a My Instagram Followers Control My Day video. Yay! Most influencers do this with options, but I trust you guys, so go wild. Just visit my Instagram, like this video, and comment on whatever you want me to do tomorrow. The comments with the most likes will be chosen, and don't forget to follow me to stay updated. As you can see, I'm Claire, and I'm a beauty influencer on Instagram. Of course, with this pretty face and eye for style, I already have loads of followers. But for someone who was born to be famous like me, that's not enough. That's why I'm doing this viral challenge. It'll get me tens of thousands of likes. Okay, that's it for today. Now I better get my beauty sleep. Gotta have glowing skin tomorrow. The first thing to do in the morning was to check my Instagram. 20,000 likes from my post last night. That's average. Let's see. I asked my followers to decide what I should wear and what I should eat for breakfast. And the most liked comments were about Y2K style and avocado toast. My favorite dish anyway. Easy peasy. I called the maid to prepare breakfast while I did my skincare routine. 
Then I made sure I took a cute selfie and uploaded it to my story. What a good start. Am I the cutest girl on earth or what? Okay, now I have to make a very difficult decision. Which bag best compliments my outfit? This one or this one? I was still trying to decide when my phone rang. Ugh, that's Liam, my boyfriend. It's so early, yet he's already sent me a ton of messages. What are you doing? Why didn't you reply to any of my texts? Hurry up if you don't want to be late for school. All right, all right, I'm coming. Jeez, why does he have to be so stressy? It doesn't matter if we're a little late. I mean, come on, it's only school. After choosing the right bag, I got into Liam's car. He frowned at me and asked me what took so long. I was busy taking selfies. I replied and posted a mirror selfie I took earlier on my Instagram with the caption, Y2K style for today. What should I do at school this morning? At break time, I was sitting in the cafeteria with Liam and my bestie, Tori. As usual, my beauty was attracting attention. All eyes were on me, and one guy even gushed out, You're so pretty, Claire. <laughs> I checked my Instagram to see how my newly posted pic was doing. Oh, it already had 50,000 likes. That's good, but I know with my charisma, I can do even better. But, huh? What's this? The most liked comment on the post wants me to go to the school library and scream, I hate studying and the library is the most boring place on earth. What kind of request is this? Don't do it. I don't have a good feeling about this. It could be from someone who's trying to sabotage you. Liam has a point. This could just be a trick that Isabella, my rival at school, devised to embarrass me. She's also an influencer on Instagram, but she just copies everything I do. Her Instagram is 5,000 followers less than mine. Yawn. But Claire, how are you going to explain to your followers if you bail out? I don't think they'd be happy about it. Hmm, right. I'm doing a challenge, aren't I? Can't stop after only two comments, especially because one from anti-fan. Besides, this is no big deal, right? Who even goes to the library anymore? So, I dragged Liam and Tori to the library. As you know, I need them to film me. Huh? Why was it so ridiculously busy in here? Since when did people actually want to study? I needed to get this over with. So breaking through the silence, I shouted, I hate studying, and the library is the most boring place on earth. All eyes instantly fell on me, and I heard tuts and grunts. Then someone said, What the hell are you doing? Ugh, why is everyone in here so serious? I just shrugged and walked away. At least Liam and Tori had captured me at my best angle. To my surprise, that video gained me a load of views and likes, and I even earned nearly 1,000 more followers. Who would have thought that such a silly act would get so popular? At that moment, Isabella walked past me. Only brainless people would scream in the library. Huh, look who's jealous now. Hey, you might as well try that. Maybe you'll get half of my followers. Isabella looks like she's about to explode with anger. <laughs> but then she sneered and said, Let's see if you're still laughing after you see what you've got to do next. Huh? What is she on about? I immediately opened my Insta to check. What? The top comment this time was from Isabella. She wants me to put a trash bag on my head and go to the mall. Ew trash bag? I spent an hour styling my hair this morning. Isabella, you wicked witch. But okay, if she wants to play, I'll prove to her that she's messing with the wrong person. Just like last time, Liam tried to talk me out of it. This is nonsense, Claire. Don't lower yourself to this level just for a few likes. I told him he was overreacting and that I wasn't going to let my followers down by bottling out of it. This seemed to annoy him, and he stormed off. Um, so who's going to take videos for me? I called out, but Liam just kept walking. Why can't he just support me like usual? Luckily, I still had Tori, and she agreed to film it for me. 
That's what best friends are for. Okay, this is more embarrassing than I thought. People keep staring at me like I'm an alien. I gave them a what-are-you-looking-at stare, prompting them to quickly turn away. No, I have to act confidently for the video to get more likes. Looking over, I saw Tori cheering me on, so I took a deep breath, stood up straight, and did my best catwalk strut through the mall. My heart was pounding like crazy, even after we walked out of the mall. Phew, it was finally over. I then quickly opened up my Insta, uploaded the video I just shot, then texted Liam asking where he was. After that, Tori and I got in a taxi to his house. Liam was already waiting for me at the door, looking all serious when I got there. So I told Tori to wait in the taxi. Then angrily I shouted as I walked over to him, You could have at least come and supported me. Do you know how upset I was when you just left like that? I wasn't comfortable filming you make a fool of yourself. I care about you too much. It's just a bit of harmless fun. Why can't you understand how important being an influencer is to me? <sighs> I don't think I can be with someone who doesn't support me and my passion anymore. We should break up. Then I just walked away, not giving Liam a chance to explain. He quickly ran over and grabbed my hand. Okay, I'm sorry. Can we talk it out? <laughs> it worked! I gestured to Tori, then turned around with a big smile at Liam. Can you believe the followers want me to test your love by pretending to break up with you? I'll show them how much you love me. But then, unexpectedly, Liam angrily shouted, What? So, I'm just another tool to get likes for your Instagram? If you want to break up, then fine. We're done. Then he stormed into his house and slammed the door. I stood there open-mouthed. How could he break up with me? In the whole two years we've been together, I've never seen him this mad. I'll let him chill for a bit and talk to him tomorrow. He'll have calmed down by then. Right? Look, Claire! Your shopping mall video has already reached 100,000 likes! Oh my god, what is this? People are going crazy for my videos. They say I'm so confident, wearing a trash bag and still looking stylish. I look like Kendall Jenner. And my followers also increased by 5,000 people. At least this is worth the effort I put in. The next morning, I waited for Liam to pick me up. But he never arrived. When I got to school, I tracked him down and asked if he was still mad at me. You're so addicted to social media. I don't even know who you are anymore. Then he walked off. At that exact moment, Isabella walked towards me. Wait, why is Tori with her? Hey, loser, you're in so much trouble. What does that mean? I looked at Tori in confusion, but she just lowered her head and quickly followed Isabella. Feeling something was wrong, I immediately opened Instagram and... Oh my god... What are these comments? Such an attention seeker. She's willing to do anything just for some likes. I heard that her boyfriend broke up with her. No surprises there. <laughs> what is this? I did all these things at their requests, and now I'm the one receiving all the hate? Suddenly, the principal announced via the loudspeaker that I had to go to his office. As I walked in, I saw my parents sitting there. Turns out news of what I did at the library had spread. But not only that, someone even accused me of stealing from the shopping mall. Huh? I didn't steal anything. To prove my innocence, I gave the principal my bag to check. And he pulled out a brand new necklace. Why is this thing in my bag? I tried explaining myself, but no one would listen. I was suspended for a week. The walkout of the principal's office was the worst thing ever. Everyone was giving me judging looks and whispering to each other. On the way home, I took a teary selfie, then posted it on Instagram with the caption, Consequences of yesterday's challenge. One week suspension. Someone put the blame on me. Once home, my ashamed-looking parents immediately took my phone away and even disconnected the Wi-Fi. Ugh! 
My life was over. I ran up to my room in a huff and flopped down onto my bed. Suddenly, my eyes crossed a photo I took with Liam on my birthday last year. That's when Liam threw me a surprise party, and he even made me a cute birthday cake. Come to think of it, I was a bit too harsh with him yesterday. He was only trying to protect me. If I'd listened to him, I wouldn't have all these hate comments and be stuck home for a week. I hurt Liam just to gain more followers. How could I be so stupid? I wished I could apologize to him right now, but... <sighs> then to my surprise, after just three days, my mom told me I was allowed back to school. There were still mutters about me, but that didn't matter, as Liam was waiting for me at my locker. I hurried over to him, apologized, and explained everything. Claire, I know you're the sweetest, most loving girl. You just got carried away with your frivolous Instagram popularity. Besides, I know you're not a thief. Then Liam told me that out of suspicion, he asked to check different CCTV at the shopping mall and discovered that it was Tori who dropped the necklace box into my bag. Turns out, she was only hanging out with me because I was famous and rich. So when Isabella paid her, she turned 180 degrees, running after Isabella and playing tricks on me. Liam reported this to the principal, and now both of them have been suspended. That's it. Chasing after popularity on the internet didn't bring me any real friends, but only virtual fans, and a fake friend, sadly. I got blindsided by the likes and followers and overlooked what was truly important. My real-life relationships and the people who genuinely care for me. After that incident, I decided to deactivate my Instagram account for a while, at least until I feel stable again. And even if I lose all my followers, I don't really mind anymore. Because right now, I'm spending time with those who really matter to me. I'm still waiting for the day my mom says, It's all fake. We're millionaires. This was just to teach you to be humble. But I know that'll never happen. And I'm still humble. But humble as in humble background. Hi, I'm Addison from Colorado. Ever since my dad passed away when I was seven, we've been broke. And mom got irked whenever I asked her for money. So going to this kind of expensive summer camp seems pretty far-fetched to me. Suddenly, somebody snatched the flyer out of my hands. It's Katie and Candace, the resident mean girls. Girls, are you ready for the trip yet? New hair, new nails, new clothes, all checked. What about you, Addie the Batty? Oops, sorry. We forgot that a poor loser like you could never afford to join in. I forced back tears as they burst out laughing, then left. Addison, are you okay? Don't listen to them. I can help. Stay away from me, Layla. Rich kids like you would never understand. I flicked her hand away and ran off. Hmm, let's see. Mom's getting ready for her night shift and didn't seem in such a bad mood. Maybe now is my chance to drop the question. Mom, I need some money for the school camp. It's the last chance to- We can barely afford the rent this month. Do you know that? Find a way to make money yourself instead of begging me, will you? At this age and you're still so unthoughtful. Unthoughtful? Have you ever been thoughtful of me? I hate how freaking poor our family is. And more than anything else, I hate you. I ran straight to my room, packed a backpack, and quickly left the house. It's already 2 a.m., and this snowstorm is only getting worse. I ignored dozens of calls from mom. There was no way I'd return to that house, ever. Oh, it's freezing. I rummaged through my backpack for my mittens when, oh, Alice in Wonderland, my favorite book. The most beautiful moments in my life suddenly came rushing back to me. It was when my dad read me bedtime stories every night. I'd never forgotten his gentle eyes and warm voice. As I turned the pages in hopes of distracting myself from the storm, my phone notified another call from mom. I have to tell her not to bother me anymore. Hang on, hospital? My mom had an accident at work? I quickly got on my bike to go there, but the barreling storm threw piles of snow against me. I couldn't see anything! Ah! Oh. Is it morning already? Contrary to yesterday's blizzard, everything looks as fresh as spring now. 
But where am I? Suddenly a giant acorn fell and broke in half in which there was a piece of paper. Welcome to Wonderland? Am I dreaming? Wake up, Addison. Mom needs you. Stop wasting time daydreaming like this. Just then there was a shrill scream. Intruder, restrain her! Suddenly, two strange men in uniform grabbed my arms, forced me over to a tiny rose arch, and made me go through it. I peered around feeling awestruck. I was in a huge greenhouse, and a well-dressed man was waiting for me. Hello? I'm Edward, the King of Wonderland. Welcome to my kingdom. Dad? Is that Dad? He looks so similar to my dad that I almost blurted it out. He welcomed me warmly with a table of lavish food. I hadn't eaten since last night, so I couldn't help but dig right in. Only when the clock chimed, I became aware of reality. Mom! I needed to get to her! I immediately asked King Edward for the exit. This land is beautiful, but a monster rules its gate. I don't know how you got here, but if you want to leave, you'll have to bring that monster three valuable items. Three items? I asked. Yes, let's see what that is. Then Sir Edward approached the glass door and spoke out loud. Mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the most handsome of them all? Your Highness, you are the most handsome, the most elegant. We wish to be as perfect as you are. <laughs> yeah, if I was you, I'd wanna be me too. Now tell me, in order for Addison to leave here, what are the required items? To escape this land, she must acquire one fair lock of Rapunzel's hair, the scarf of Red Riding Hood, and Aladdin's magic lamp. Complete this quest before the clock strikes midnight, or be stuck in this world for an eternity. What? Are you serious? Where am I meant to find those things? Don't worry, I'll send Arthur, my close bodyguard, to accompany you. Just then, a tall, handsome guy about my age appeared. Hey, little girl, there's no time to waste. We need to leave now. Then he threw me a set of clothes and told me to change. After that, we went through the same gate as before. Only this time, it no longer led to a red rose garden, but an underground sewer system. Ew, what are we doing down here? It stinks! Arthur didn't say a word and quickly found a staircase leading above ground. I immediately followed him, and there was a busy street right in front of me. I noticed that everyone was looking at something. It was long, blonde hair falling from a skyscraper's penthouse. Huh? Rapunzel lives in the Empire State Building? Ridiculous! We quickly walked over there, but it was guarded very strictly. How can we get in? That's why I told you to wear this. So we easily blended in with the maids and waiters and entered the tower. Wow, I've never set foot in such a luxurious house. Who are you? Startled, I turned around to see Rapunzel in the Grimm's fairy tales, standing right in front of me. But wait, why does this girl look familiar? Layla, is that you? Oh goodness, I knew you were rich, but I didn't expect you to live in such a beautiful house. You... you know me? I excitedly showed her our class photos. Layla seemed very interested in them, but she couldn't recall anything, and kept asking me to tell her more stories about school. When I was rambling about our friends to her, Arthur turned to me and whispered, You need to carry on the task now. Oh, it's been two hours already. I chose my words carefully to ask her for a lock of hair, and of course, she said yes. But when we were about to leave, she clung on to me. Please stay here with me. Clothes, shoes, anything here you want, I can give it to you. This one? This one also. All of this luxury stuff will all be mine? Yes, of course! Wake up. Have you forgotten what we came here for? Are you willing to give up on seeing your mother ever again for this? I'm sorry, Layla, but I really have to go. My mom's in danger. Then please take me with you. I can't stay in this hideous house anymore. Come on, you have everything on earth here. It's like heaven. No, it's hell. All this stuff is just meaningless. What I need is freedom, school, friends, and being able to do what I want. Turns out, after her parents' divorce, her dad did everything to win custody and kept her here just to make money from her gorgeous blonde hair. I miss mom. I'd rather live in a small, shabby house than this flashy, cold place. I couldn't leave her here. Suddenly, I remembered how Eugene saves Rapunzel in the movie, 
So after getting Layla's approval, I cut her hair short and the three of us ran away from this penthouse. We dropped Layla off at school where her mom was already waiting for her. The simplest things like freedom, friends, or someone who truly cares for us are much more valuable than superficial material things. Sadly, I always craved what I didn't have and took what I did have for granted. Let's go. Why are you still standing here? Huh? We have to attend the class too? Ain't no time for this. We gotta find Red Riding Hood. Without a word, Arthur just dragged me away, eventually stopping in front of a girl wearing a scarf on her head. Here she is, the person you need. I waved at her, but she just coldly looked up and asked, What do you want? Huh? Red Riding Hood was none other than Katie? Um, I'll get right to the point. I really need your red scarf. Can you excuse me? This is Gucci. Do you know how much it costs? It's from even the limited edition. Look at you. You probably don't even have a dime to your name. Yeah, it is true, but I really need this scarf. I'll do anything you want. All right. Hope you don't regret saying that. Right after that, a luxury car came to pick us up. We stopped at an apple farm, which was familiar to me as it was where my mom worked. Well, I want to bake an apple pie for my mom, so pick me a box of apples. Remember, you have to do it alone. Your friend's out. <laughs> my mom can even pick an average of 12 boxes a day, so one box was just a piece of cake. But who knows her one box was actually a container of 1,000 pounds of apples. Did she want to bake for the whole town? Oh, I'm exhausted. Who on earth could pick apples under this scorching heat for hours? My head started spinning. Losing balance, I fell off the ladder. Luckily, Arthur caught me just in time. Still, your mom does this every day. Can you imagine how hard she works to earn food for the family? Maybe that's why my mom is always tired and cranky. Suddenly, I missed her so much. I finally harvested enough apples and brought them into exchange for the scarf. But Katie still made me choose the 10 most perfect apples out of them. No matter which ones I chose, she gave a dissatisfied scowl. This apple is not okay. Neither is this one. It has a two centimeter scratch. You're too much. It's all the same. No way. Everything for my mom must be the best. She's sick and I need a perfect pie for her. Then Katie told me that when her mom was pregnant, she found out she was sick. The doctor advised her to terminate the pregnancy for her safety, but she refused and risked her life to give birth to Katie. Hearing that story, my eyes just naturally welled up with tears. What now? Are you tired from this little bit of work? No, I just miss my mom so much. I really want to get back to her. I realized that even Katie, the heartless, mean girl, still loves her mom this much. Yet, all I do is ask and plead with my mom. I'm such a terrible child. If you love your mom that much, you know what to do from now on. Help me deliver this gift to your heroic mother, will you? And here, take it and complete the mission. Finally, we've arrived. Our final destination is a museum. Arthur said that there will be a secret room with the magic lamp, but getting the key to that room was already a hassle. There were security lasers all over the place, so we broke in through the ventilation system. Arthur tied a rope around my waist and then slowly dropped me down where the key was. Just a little more and I got it! But as soon as I touched the key, a drop of my sweat fell, causing the alarm to go off. The guards rushed in from the door, but fortunately, Arthur pulled me up in time. We got out of the ventilation system, but this place was like a maze. Then Arthur pulled me to hide behind a wall. Little by little, his face was getting closer and closer to mine, and my heart was pounding like crazy. Suddenly, the whole wall behind me moved. Turns out there was a secret staircase leading down to the basement, and it took us no time to find the room. Huh? Where's the magic lamp? Arthur approached the only object in the room. It's a projector. He turned it on, then on the white wall appeared the image of my mom, being tired after a long day of work. But when she got home, she still came to check if I was sleeping well. The image of her waking up early to make me my favorite breakfast. Above all, she totally knows about the camping trip and is trying to work overtime so I could join it. Time is running out. You should hurry to go back and hand in these items. I tried to regain my composure, quickly wiped away the tears, and left with Arthur. I'll be back with my mom soon. 
I'm back! Please take me to the gate! Suddenly, a chiming sound got me frozen. I'm sorry, but time's up! You failed the quest. But why worry? It isn't so bad here. You'll have everything you could ever want. At any cost, please lead me to that monster. I don't need anything else. I just want to be with my mom. I've been thoughtless all this time. I can't leave her when she needs me most. Actually, there is no monster here. It is the greed, selfishness, and ingratitude inside of every one of us. But I can see... You already defeated your monster and learned the lesson. So, you can go back to your mom now. Huh? Everything was so bright. Where was I? Honey, you're awake. Thank goodness. Someone squeezed my hand. It was mom. Mom told me how she'd collapsed at work due to overworking. Then she found out I'd fallen off my bike in the snowstorm and knocked myself unconscious. Here you go, sweetie. My mom placed some money in my hand. Now you can go on the camping trip. I'm so sorry for upsetting you. And I promise I will work extra hard so you don't have to go without. I burst into tears and shook my head. I don't need it. I don't want you working overtime and putting your health at risk for me. Having you healthy and by my side is all I need. Mom, please forgive me for everything. As we pulled apart, I noticed someone standing in the doorway. Arthur. Turns out, it was Arthur who rescued me in the snowstorm. Thank you so much. You're my knight in shining armor. Anytime. I'm just glad you're okay. I mean it. I wouldn't have completed the tasks without you. Huh? What tasks? Looking into his dreamy eyes, I honestly felt like he'd been sent by my dad to help me learn from my mistakes and be grateful for what I had. <laughs> Never mind. I'm just glad you're here. I was walking in the classroom when a girl shouted, Don't come in, we're getting changed! I immediately stopped still. I heard them laughing like squeaking dolphins. Not knowing what to do, I frantically turned around to leave and bang. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, I muttered to myself. What was that wall doing there, and why was there all these stars around in broad daylight? I fell to my knees, and yuck, my nose was bleeding. Then I saw this pretty girl staring down at me. Alas, was she an angel? Don't worry, with our help you'll soon get used to this school. I I'm Dolly, by the way. Then she winked at me. Nope, she wasn't an angel. She was a student. So, my name's Dean, and the first day in my new job as a homeroom teacher wasn't going as planned. I have experience teaching physics at co-ed school, but never in a private all-girls school. You see, houses for teachers and high salaries were the reasons why I chose to transfer here. To be honest, if I haven't overindulged in the stock market and ended up in debt, I certainly wouldn't have taken off from home and severed all contact with my wife, Anna. She paid all my debts, and that was too much for a man's pride. So here I was, trying to make a quick buck so I could pay her back and win back her heart. From the get-go, I knew this school would be different to what I was used to. As when I first came to meet the principal, I saw a group of giggling teenage girls huddled outside of her office. They whispered among each other, started taking pictures of me, and even made finger heart signs. At the end of the meeting, the principal said, You'll be the second male teacher in our school, and between you and me, Mr. Richmond is somewhat of an old fogey, so I think you'll be a wind of change here, she grinned. After that, she introduced me to the other teachers in the staff room. As I shook hands with Mr. Richmond, he smirked and said, They're going to eat you alive. What a strange old man. What did he even mean by that? I'm a confident professional guy, and they were a bunch of teenage girls. This job would be a breeze, right? Then I turned and saw a group of students with their lips pressed to the frosted glass, then they giggled and ran off. Anyway, back to my first full day here. I let Dolly help me up to my feet, stuck a bit of tissue in my nose to stop the bleeding, then reminded myself of my motto. To know oneself is true progress. Then I took a deep breath and tried to start my lecture in a professional manner. Dozens of pairs of eyes glared up at me. I felt like I was being eyed up for dinner. Then there was the mess. Flung about the place were gym clothes. Ew, and even worse, there was this odd smell that hit my olfactory organs directly. Um, it wasn't the sweet sense of perfume or anything. It was like intense body odor. How strange. Maybe my sense of smell had been affected by my bleeding nose. Never mind, the lesson must go on. 
When I was walking down the class, a shout came from the corner. Alert code red! Then this pink dart flew past my face, and I had to lean back to dodge it. At that moment, my heart stopped beating for a second. Just like in a Japanese manga, the girl caught it in a ninja way. But wait, I looked closely and found out that it was just a tampon. My god, what on earth was going on? Well, my first day on the job had been eventful. I needed a lie down and a strong drink. But I bet things would calm down when the excitement of my presence wore off, right? <laughs> Wrong. As each day seemed to get crazier. I soon had my own fan club. As every lunchtime, Dolly and her friends followed me around. And every morning they brought me a bottle of juice with some cute note stuck to it. Then things spiraled, as one day in the cafeteria, Dolly sidled up to me, twizzled the strand of her hair and said, Sir, I like you. Knowing full well what she meant, I tried to say as nonchalantly as I could, Um, I like you too, you're a good student. Then she put her arm around me and in a flirty voice said, No, I mean I like you. I turned as red as a tomato and instantly loosened my tie. Jeez, it was hot in here. Help, send help. I forced a smile and politely told her I had a meeting, then I walked off as quickly as possible. Talk about being intense, but luckily, I had sports day to distract me from all the teenage girl hormones. I was in the athletic squad back in the day, so I reserved my spot in the teacher's long-distance running race. As I was warming up, I saw Dolly and her friends standing at the sideline with a huge banner with my face on it. The other school teachers all giggled when they saw it. Cringe. Then the race started, and I was miles ahead of everyone else. This was an absolute breeze. I would definitely be the champion. Then I heard Dolly whistle over at me, and another girl shouted, We love you, sir! Then, ugh, I tripped over my own feet and fell over and sprained my ankle. Ouch! One by one, the teachers overtook me. Even Mr. Richmond. Talk about humiliating. I wanted the ground to gobble me up. But then my fan club hurried over to me, and Dolly said, in every high school boy's story, there's always a drop-dead gorgeous girl who makes him do stupid things to try to win the girl over, right? Well, my story is pretty much along those lines, except I was competing with a dog. Yeah, you heard me. Here we go. So my name's Liam, and I'm 17. And Suzanne is the girl I was chasing. I remember the first time I laid eyes on her. It was during a football match at school, and she was one of the cheerleaders. Her bouncy blonde locks and her bright blue eyes drove me crazy and I couldn't take my eyes off her. In other words, I was smitten, so that's when I started my pickup plan. I paid my friend $10 to find out her address and her favorite food. Stalk her much? <laughs> well, this was only the beginning. Once I had her address, I walked up to her house holding a strawberry cheesecake with a love letter attached to it. I peeked over the fence and was about to put the cake on the doorstep, ring the doorbell, and run away. But as I was walking towards the door, a dog appeared and jumped towards me. I freaked out and tried to run away, but instead I face-planted in the ground and, of course, the cake landed right next to me and the letter flew away. What a disaster. Plus, the damn dog kept biting at my pants. Meanwhile, I was screaming like a little kid. And guess who appeared at that moment? None other than Suzanne. Noticing the cake and the letter with her name on it, she smiled down at me, helped me up and said she had a first aid kit inside. She said her dog, Loki, just got excited when he saw new people. And then she kept apologizing, but I told her it was okay. And to be honest, I'd fall down like that every day if it meant I got to be helped up by Suzanne. After that, we started texting, although most of the time she was sending me photos of Loki. Finally, after a few months of texts, I plucked up the courage to ask her out on a proper date, and it was amazing. After dropping her off at her front door, I decided that that was the moment to confess my feelings and ask her to be my girlfriend. I was shaking so much that I almost forgot to breathe. But luckily, she told me she liked me too. Then suddenly, she grabbed me and planted a big kiss on my cheek. And so I held her and decided to go in for a proper kiss on the lips. But out of nowhere, Loki appeared and leapt on me and I fell flat on my face. Not again! And this time, I was furious. I sat up and I was about to go crazy. But then I noticed Suzanne was laughing. Loki seems to like you, she joked. He's driving me insane, but seeing how happy she was made my anger all gone. I was about to stand up and go in for a kiss again, but Loki kept pulling Suzanne inside. She had no choice but to follow him, so I was left there all alone. Man, what was that dog's problem? After that night, I refused to go to Suzanne's house when we met up. I even told her I thought her dog hated me, and she thought that that was hilarious. She then said he was just protective, and then she shared the story of why they adopted him. So when I was eight, my best friend lived next door. His name was Andrew, and Loki was his pet. The three of us were so close, 
but one day Andrew's parents got divorced and Andrew moved to Canada with his dad. So he left Loki with me. It's been nine years since we saw each other. A thought crossed my mind. Maybe Loki hated me because he thought Suzanne was Andrew's girlfriend. No way. He was just a dog, right? And the trouble was never ending. Prom night arrived and Suzanne was so excited. I made sure I got to her house early and waited her for a while while she did her hair and stuff. I told her I'd wait outside, but she insisted I come in. I was dreading seeing Loki, but of course there he was, waiting for me by the couch with a smirk on his face. I mean, come on, since when did dogs smirk? I sat there nervously watching him, but after Suzanne had gone back upstairs, he came over to me with a photo in his mouth. It was Suzanne sitting next to a boy, and Loki was there too. Obviously, it was Andrew in the photo, and they looked so happy together. Why was Loki showing me this? I looked Loki straight in the eyes and said, Listen up, Loki. Andrew and Suzanne aren't together. Suzanne is my girlfriend, so just leave us alone, okay? Loki just kept staring at me, then he left. It was clear I'd lost the plot. There I was threatening a dog. <laughs> After a while, Suzanne came downstairs, and we were about to leave. But I couldn't find my shoes anywhere. After 30 minutes of looking, we still couldn't find them, and by then Suzanne was pretty upset with me. She ran upstairs and locked herself in her room. I didn't know what to do, so I got up to leave barefoot. When I got outside, I noticed Loki smirking again, but I wasn't in the mood to care about him now. Suddenly, I heard footsteps behind me. I turned around, and it was Loki with my shoes in his mouth. He dropped them at my feet and then ran off. I couldn't believe it. That stupid dog stole my shoes and ruined our night. I spent the next week texting Suzanne trying to apologize, and eventually she forgave me. But I still hate Loki so much. He was seriously making my life a living nightmare. During the summer, Suzanne was going to Chicago with her parents to visit her aunt, so she asked me to look after Loki for two weeks. What? You've got to be kidding me. I had no choice but to agree. If I said no, I'd risk losing Suzanne. So when I went to pick him up, I saw him standing there smirking at me again. It looked like he was saying, Oh, hey, Liam, are you ready for two weeks of hell with me? The worst part was all the instructions Suzanne had for me about how to take care of her precious Loki. Feed him with organic dog food three times a day in his special bowl. Then make sure he gets two walks a day, no less than five miles each time. And every night at 6 p.m. he needs his bath with his doggy bubble bath. He likes to be massaged behind the ears. And please read him a bedtime story to ensure he has sweet dreams. Uh, this had to be some kind of joke. How would I remember all of that? And as expected from day one, it was a total disaster. It was summer vacation. So I wasn't going to bed early. In fact, I was playing video games with my friends all night. So I never managed to wake up at 6 a.m. to feed them. And surely he wouldn't die if he skipped a meal, right? But well, he didn't give me much choice. He leapt onto my bed at 6.30 a.m. licking my face and demanding food. Another time I was going to my friend's house, so obviously I couldn't take him with me. So before leaving, I said, hey, Loki, be a good boy. I'll be back soon. Then I smirked and locked the door. Loki started barking, so I knew he was angry. Well, it served him right. However, when I got home that night, I discovered he peed all over my clothes and messed up my entire room. He'd clearly done this to get revenge, and I was fuming. I started yelling at him as I was cleaning up the mess. And that's when I realized that I'd have to take him everywhere with me. Even though he was super annoying, I started to understand why Suzanne loved him. He was smart, affectionate, and I guess it's kind of nice to have company. When I was watching movies alone, he would come over and lay in my lap. When I played video games, I could ask him to bring me snacks. And once I went to the toilet and realized the loo roll was finished, and I shouted, Loki, can you please get me some loo roll? And he actually brought me one. A few days later, we were out walking in the park, and I saw some boys playing basketball. I was desperate to join them, so I told Loki to wait for me. But after the match, he was nowhere to be seen. I freaked out and frantically searched the whole park, but it was hopeless. Suzanne would never forgive me if I lost her precious Loki. So the next day, I put up some flyers hoping someone had found him. Well, luckily for me, someone called me and said they had found him. I immediately went to get him and waited outside the address they'd given me, which was in a kind of dodgy part of town. While I was waiting, two men dressed in black clothes approached me. They looked suspicious, so I tried to step out of the way, but one of them grabbed my arm and said, Give us your money, otherwise you might get hurt. I started struggling and trying to get away. But this made them even angrier. I freaked out when suddenly I heard a familiar barking. Loki! He was rushing towards us and started biting at the robber's clothes, pulling them away from me. I was so relieved and after a while, the robbers ran off, scared half to death. 
I gave Loki the biggest hug, and he was wagging his tail in delight. Then a woman with a dog came towards us. Turns out she was the person who had called me. She'd been walking her dog Penny in the park when Loki had started following them and wouldn't leave Penny alone. He'd been smitten with her, so Penny's owner didn't know what to do and took Loki home. Eventually, she saw the posters, and that's when she'd contacted me. Ha! Huh, so Loki was as bad as me, chasing a pretty girl. How funny. When we got home, I thanked Loki again for saving me. Then I said, You know Andrew doesn't live here anymore, right? He's in Canada, which is far away. But listen, I love Suzanne so much, and I know you do too. So we'll take care of her together, okay? He kept staring at me like he was waiting for something more. So then I said, Oh, right. Yeah. If you agree... I promise I'll take you to Penny's house to visit her. Deal? I reached out my hand to shake his, and he legit put his paw in my hand. Okay, done deal. A few days later, Suzanne got back and picked up Loki. And when I told Suzanne everything that had happened, she burst out laughing. After that, our relationship got even better, and we started hanging out with Loki more. Although whenever I wanted to kiss her, I always said to Loki, Hey bro, look away. And he never once tried to interfere again. Loki and I are on good terms now as he's in love with Penny, as I am with Suzanne. It's true what they say, boys go wild for pretty girls. Hi, my name is Happiness. You're impressed with my name, right? My dad gave me that name. And yeah, as you can guess, he put a lot of hopes and dreams in me. I'm now 18 years old, and tomorrow I will fly to Massachusetts to start my college. My parents are preparing a farewell party for me downstairs. I have never left my hometown and been away from my family, so this is such an occasion. As I'm packing my belongings for college, a flood of memories come to mind. You see, when I was a kid, my family was dirt poor. We lived in an old, dilapidated house on the outskirts of Selma in Alabama. I remember we would buy a chicken at the beginning of the month, and my parents would make it last the whole month. I didn't realize we were poor, though. In fact, at that point, I was just a happy, carefree little girl, but that wouldn't last. My mom worked as a cleaner for a rich family, but they treated her terribly, and she barely earned enough money to even take the bus there. My dad was a lorry driver, and so he was away a lot, delivering goods to other states. Every weekend when he came home, I'd stand out on the porch as soon as I saw his big truck driving up the dusty road. I'd run out there and jump up and down. The best part was that he always brought me a little present, like a piece of candy that he'd save for me, or a small toy. They weren't valuable gifts, but they meant the world to me. One time he came home, and I ran up to him and said, Daddy, yesterday Jeannie's dad brought her a chocolate egg back from his trip. It even had a toy inside. I want one too. My dad looked confused. Then he said he'd heard of them and they were called kinder eggs. And then with loving eyes and a smile, he promised he'd find me one, no matter how hard it would be, even if it was the last thing he did. The next weekend, I raced out to the street and could barely contain my excitement as I waited for him to come home. I waited and waited, but still he didn't arrive. I started to get worried, so I asked my mom where he was. She said, Oh, sweetie, he's on his way. Why don't you go to sleep, and as soon as you wake up, he'll be here. There was no way I could sleep. All I could think about was getting a chocolate egg with a toy inside. I'd almost dozed off when I heard his voice. I ran downstairs and jumped into his arms, hugging him. I missed you, Daddy, I told him, and he laughed and said, I missed you too, sweetie pie. Then I said, Um... Where is it? Did you get me a chocolate egg? I eagerly asked. Then his face dropped. He said, Sorry, baby. I was working late, so I didn't have time to buy one. But I promise I'll bring you two next time to make up for it. Okay? But this wasn't okay. I was so disappointed. I pushed him away from me and burst into tears, saying, You promised! You promised me! I had never cried like that before over something so small. But at the time, it felt like such a big deal and my dad looked confused to see me so upset. At that moment, my mom came through and saw me. She immediately understood everything, then started to comfort my dad. Come on, honey, take a rest. You've worked yourself too hard recently. Come eat, you're so skinny these days. This just made me more annoyed. I was the one who needed comforting, not my dad. So I shouted at my mom, 
Mommy, Daddy didn't keep his promise. But my mom just ignored me, and so I stormed back up the stairs, crying all the way. After I'd calmed down, my mom came to my room and said, Happiness, your dad works so hard, and you should just be happy that he's home safely. I know he didn't bring you what you wanted, but he will next time, okay? In the meantime, I'll make your favorite cupcakes every day. Every day? Wow, okay, I said to her. And she really did. She made me cupcakes every day, and I was so happy. After a few days, I said to her, Mommy, I like you more than Daddy. I don't even love him anymore because he broke his promise. My mom just looked at me and said, Oh, happiness, you don't know what you're saying. One day when you grow up, you'll understand that everything your dad does is for you. He loves you so much. The next weekend rolled around, and as usual, I ran outside to wait for my dad. Just like the week before, the sun set and still he was nowhere to be seen. I was about to start crying when I noticed a man running towards our front door. My mom appeared and he said something, and suddenly my mom started panicking. She called out to me and said we had to go to Grandpa's place immediately. I had no idea what was happening, but for the next month my grandpa took care of me because my parents didn't come home. I missed them so much, and whenever I asked when they were coming to get me, my grandpa just said, Happiness, they're busy working. Don't you worry, just stay here and enjoy your time with me. Eventually I got used to it. Then one morning, Grandpa woke me up early and said it was time to go home. I was so excited that I kept on singing happily. As we pulled up outside our house, my heart started beating faster. I was home! Then a shadow appeared in the doorway, and I couldn't believe what I was seeing. It was my mom and dad. But my dad was in a wheelchair. My mom looked so thin and tired, and my dad had no legs. What had happened? I looked to Grandpa to reassure me, but he looked as nervous as I did. Then in my little voice, I said, Daddy, where are your legs? He smiled at me and with his usual loving eye said, They got hurt. But hey, what do you think of my wheelchair? He let me sit on his lap, and Mom pushed us around, and it was so cool. I was way too young to understand what was really going on. All I remember was how many people kept visiting to check on Dad and that I finally got to try a chocolate egg. That same day, a doctor came to visit, and after he checked on my dad, he came over and patted my head. Then he pulled a chocolate egg out of his bag, and then another one, and another one! Three chocolate eggs! I couldn't believe it. I was shaking with excitement. The doctor said the gift was from my dad, and that I should thank him. I ran to my dad and said, Thank you, Daddy. He looked like he was going to cry, and I asked if he was okay. And he just smiled and said, I'm happy because you're happy. That's all that matters to me. For the first time in my life, I got to try a chocolate egg, and it was the most delicious thing I'd ever tasted. And the best part was that inside there was a toy. After I opened and ate all three, I just wanted more. I kept asking my dad when I could get more, and he just laughed. And then I thought, maybe if I studied really hard and was a good girl, I'd get some more. So that's what I did. I focused on my study. And one day I won a medal at school for winning a math contest. I was so excited to show my parents and assumed they'd give me a chocolate egg as a reward. But that's not what happened. They congratulated me, but said it wasn't possible for them to get me another chocolate egg. I don't know why, but this made me so angry. I cried and I even threw my bag at them. And this made my mom super mad. She scolded me so much that I was scared and ran out the house and went to my grandpa's house. I cried and cried and told him everything, and my grandpa said, Happiness, the reason your mom got so mad is because she is under too much pressure and has to work so hard to look after you. Now, your dad can't work, so she's in charge, and it's a lot for her to deal with. Then he told me what happened to my dad and it changed my life forever. That day when my dad was out doing his deliveries, he got an opportunity to do some overtime, which he jumped at the chance to do so he could buy me my chocolate eggs. On his way home, he stopped to buy them for me, and then because he was so tired, as he was leaving the store, he got hit by a drunk driver. He was hit so hard he lost both his legs. I couldn't believe it. How could I have been so selfish? 
If it weren't for me demanding a chocolate egg, my dad would still have his legs. I felt so terrible. And so the next day, when I won some candy for the other math contests, I came home and went to my parents. Mommy, Daddy, I'm so sorry. I want you to have these. You always do your best to give me the sweetest life, and so I wanted to make yours sweeter too. That probably sounds a bit deep for a six-year-old to say, right? Well, my grandpa taught me that one. My parents were so moved that they almost cried when they hugged me. And even though I didn't understand it at the time, I do now. And it's so true. It's taken me a while, but now that I'm about to move out, I finally understand the life my parents have given me and how sweet it has been. Through this channel, I'd like to send some words to my parents. Mom, Dad, if you're watching this, I want you to know how much I appreciate everything you've done for me. Now it's my turn to work hard and make you proud. No matter how hard life gets, I'll persevere, just like you both have, because I'm your happiness. Hi guys, I'm Chrissy, and my high school life took a drastic turn thanks to my crazy, overprotective mom. You see, my parents divorced when I was a little kid. I stayed with my mom, but she worked for the criminal investigation department, which meant she was super busy, so the house chores remained undone, and we lived off takeaways. Trust me, having pizza and egg fried rice every night isn't as good as it sounds. My grandparents could see that my mom was struggling to juggle her work and home life commitments, so I went to stay with them. I didn't mind this, as mom always visited me on weekends. Besides, grandma's meals are delicious. But then, mom switched departments. She went from chasing criminals to handling paperwork at the station. Due to these changes in circumstances, she had far more time on her hands, so I moved back in with her. It's only by living with her that I realized just how different she is to me. Talk about my opposite, as she's strong, fierce, and impulsive. Basically, she's like a man, while I'm a sweet girly girl who loves wearing pretty clothes and watching cute movies. You can imagine my horror when I invited my bestie, Sharon, over, and mom was walking around the house in a skull print tank top, ripped jeans, and biker boots. She looked like she was going on a bike rally. Yeah, this was just her usual style, but I was expecting she would at least act normal for once when we had a guest around. It was so cringe. She was almost 40, not 15. Then, on my first day of high school, mom insisted she take me there and pick me up, as she was worried there might be troublemakers on the bus. Yep, I know, this was ridiculous. I mean, how delicate does she think I am? But I didn't want to upset her, so I reluctantly agreed. School's out and I was chatting with my friends while waiting for my mom to show up when we suddenly heard the sound of a motorbike engine coming toward the school. Me and my friends got excited and whistled as we thought a cute guy was passing by. But then they stopped near us and took off their helmet. I literally wanted to faint. It was my beloved mother. Oh, sweet Jesus. What on earth was she doing? My mom shouted with joy. Hey, Chrissy, get on. Then she held a spare helmet out to me. I swear, it was like the whole school was outside watching us. How embarrassing. When we arrived home, I asked her where the bike had come from. She replied, What? Oh, you mean Eleanor? I just bought her last week. The weather is so nice today, so I thought I would bring her along. Yes, you heard her right. My mom named the bike after Eleanor Roosevelt. Unbelievable! The embarrassment didn't end there. Oh no. One day, my teacher informed us that tomorrow after school was a parent-teacher conference. I couldn't have mom turning up in a teenage rebel outfit, so I searched her closet for something mom-like. Nope. All my mom owned were t-shirts, ripped shorts, and crop tops. Ugh! So I went online and found this beautiful blue dress, then I told her to buy it. The next day after school, I waited for mom in my form room. All the parents were already there, only my mom was missing. I was about to call her when suddenly somebody walked into the room. Oh. My. God. Someone, please knock me out right now. It was my mom, and you wouldn't believe what she was wearing. No, 
it wasn't the blue dress. Instead, it was this super skinny black leather dress, black sunglasses, 10-inch high heels, and a black choker necklace. She looked like she belonged in a vampire movie. Everyone was gawping at her. I think some of the dads were even drooling a bit. When I confronted her about it, she just shrugged and said, Sweetie, this dress is much more my style than that mumsy blue one. Now, this was officially my number one most embarrassing moment ever. Thanks, Mom. Why couldn't she be like me? I mean, I was starting to think that I was the adult here, not her. The embarrassment didn't end there. Instead, she took it to a whole new level. My school was planning a camping trip, and I was so excited about it. Mom wanted to come along and supervise, but I firmly said no. She started saying, but honey, you don't know how dangerous the woods are. What if you got bitten by a snake? Do you know how to handle that? I don't think so. What? She was just being ridiculous again. We argued for a while, but in the end, she agreed to let me go without her. The trip was so much fun, and some cute boys asked Sharon and me if we wanted to go for a swim in the lake. Of course, we said yes. I mean, look at them. They were so cute. Suddenly, I heard screaming. It was Sharon. She said someone was hiding in the bushes and watching us. That was so creepy. The cute boys said they'd go and check it out, but then this person jumped out of the bush and did a judo throw on them. Wait a minute. I know that move. Could it be? Oh, no. It was my mom! What was she wearing? She was in full army gear. She even had binoculars. Jeez, Mom, what were you doing looking like a G.I. Joe? I couldn't hold my tears and I cried out, Oh my God, why can't you leave me alone? You're ruining everything! Then I ran back to the camp. She left after that, but I felt so embarrassed for the rest of the trip. When I returned home, my mom immediately said sorry to me and swore that something like that would never happen again. Okay, I could see in her eyes that she really meant it, so I would give her another chance. She calmed down a lot after that and even let me go to school by myself. Well, that was big progress, don't you think? Soon after that, I started to date this boy named Kevin, and boy, was he hot! He was one of the popular kids at school, so I still couldn't believe he chose me. I don't know how mom found out about him, but she did, and she insisted on inviting him over for dinner. I made her agree not to do anything crazy. I mean, what was the worst that could happen? The dinner was going well, until we got to dessert. Then mom started asking him awkward questions, like, Kevin, how many girls have you dated? And... I assume you two have health classes at school, or should I remind you of some important facts? Oh, sweet Jesus, Mom! Her questions were beyond embarrassing. Kevin just sat there with a super awkward smile on his face and didn't answer. But then Mom announced it was very late and practically shoved him out of the house. Huh, it was only 8.30 p.m. After he left, I went straight to my mom and we started arguing. Mom, you agreed not to do anything crazy! Why can't you act like a normal mom? She replied, Oh, honey, that Kevin guy is really cute, but he's not good for you. I know his type. They only want to take advantage of girly girls like you. What? Girly girls like me? What was that supposed to mean? I shouted back, You're doing it again! You're being overprotective! That's because you're not tough enough. If you wouldn't be so girly and be a badass like your mom, I wouldn't have to protect you all the time. I stormed up to my room and slammed the door shut. I was so going to prove to her that she was wrong about Kevin and that I didn't need her protection. Fortunately, mom hadn't scared Kevin off. Phew! He told me that his parents were super embarrassing too. One evening, Kevin took me to this nice restaurant. There were candles, live music, and the food was delicious. It was so romantic. Then he touched my hand and leaned in closer. This was so exciting. I was about to have my first kiss. Suddenly, someone banged on the table nearby and ruined the moment. That's when I noticed they had a keychain on their bag that looked exactly like the one I'd made once at summer camp. I stood up and walked toward the table. 
A middle-aged lady with blonde hair and sunglasses was sitting there. I tried to look at her face, but it was like she was avoiding me. I took a closer look, and I couldn't believe it. I ripped the wig off her head, and yes, it was my beloved mother, again! To be honest, I didn't want to argue with her anymore. Today was proof that she just couldn't change. So I just said in a calm voice, I hate you, Mom. You're the worst mom ever. Then I grabbed Kevin's arm and ran out of there. Okay, maybe what I said was a bit harsh, but she just ruined what would have been my first kiss. I couldn't concentrate on our date after that, so I asked Kevin to take me home. But to my surprise, he drove me back to his place. Uh Uh-oh, I knew what that meant. But I wasn't ready for any of that yet, so I told him I'd get an Uber. Suddenly, he grabbed my arm and tried to drag me into his house. I couldn't believe this was actually happening. Mom was so right about him. I was freaking out. But then suddenly, I remembered something important that she'd taught me, so I used her signature judo move on him. It worked, as he laid on the ground and groaned out in pain. Ha! And that's when my mom arrived on her motorbike. As soon as I saw her, I ran over to her, hugged her tight, and cried like a baby in her arms. You must be wondering how my mom found me. Well... When Kevin came by to have dinner, she pickpocketed his phone and hacked it so she had access to all his messages and location. So after I dragged him out of the restaurant, he texted his friends saying he was trying to get in bed with me at all costs, which my mom saw, so she rushed to rescue me. Oh God, mom, that was so not okay. But what could you expect from a criminal investigator? When we arrived home, we had a serious talk. To my surprise, she admitted that she was wrong about me. She saw now that I was able to take care of myself. That judo move I did on Kevin really impressed her. See? Girly girls can kick some butt too. So, from that moment on, things between us improved lots. Turns out, my mom isn't so annoying after all. I realize now that she's pretty cool, and all the things she did were just to protect me. Okay, so... Maybe she took it to the extreme levels, but she did it with good intentions. Thanks to my mom, I feel stronger now. You know what they say, I'm a strong woman because a strong woman raised me. Although, one thing's for sure, I won't be borrowing her clothes anytime soon. Hi everyone. Jack here. I'm 17 and I live with my mom, dad, and sis. We're pretty much a normal family. I suppose I do okay at school. I'm not super popular or anything, as I am a little on the shy side, but I'm not unpopular either. I'm really good at sports studies, and I definitely want to pursue this further when I go to college and stuff. Anyway, I want to tell you about my best friend Danny, and the girl of my dreams, Amy. I first met Danny at the age of 10. We were both at the local pool, and back then, I was energetic, and well, I did a lot of stuff without thinking it through. I started splashing about in the pool, and soon I realized I couldn't put my feet on the ground. I couldn't swim. So, yeah, this was bad. I began to panic and tried shouting out for help, but a load of water ended up in my mouth. Then Danny appeared and helped me over to the shallow end. Turns out he was new to town and was starting at the same school that I went to. After that, we became best friends. Danny's this effortlessly cool, stylish, and handsome guy. He was always more popular than me, and all the girls liked him, but still, he chose to be friends with me. Being around him was great fun. We hung out and goofed around. There's this girl from school called Amy. She's popular and beautiful. She always wears these pretty dresses, and, well, she just stands out. Problem is, I wasn't the only one to notice this. Practically every boy at school had a crush on her. I didn't think I stood a chance with her, but then the school picnic happened. I ended up in the same group as her, so I went over to her and tried to talk. I felt so nervous that I couldn't get any words out. Then I tripped over a branch and accidentally fell into her arms. In that moment, I imagined we looked into each other's eyes and she could see how much I liked her. Then we'd kiss and date and marry and live happily ever after. But yeah, that wasn't reality. In real life, I was stiff as a log and was so embarrassed. 
I quickly snapped out of it, got up and muttered out, sorry. She giggled and said, no problem. I hope you didn't hurt yourself. Amazingly, we started chatting after that. Things quickly changed between Amy and me. We talked a lot on Messenger, and I often sat with her at lunch. She was so fun to be around, and I loved spending time with her. Then we started dating. I often had to pinch myself to convince myself that yes, I really was dating the most beautiful girl in school. We both loved nature, so we often spent our weekends going for walks and exploring new places. Our first kiss happened in my room. We were meant to be working on our science project, but I couldn't stop staring at her. She was just so beautiful. So I leaned over and kissed her. It was like fireworks were going off around us. <laughs> Talk about magical. After that, we became pretty much inseparable. I often went out to restaurants with her family, and she regularly came over for dinner with mine. Things were amazing. She was my princess. With her around, I felt so happy, and I couldn't imagine my life without her in it. Then one night, she texted me, I love you. This made me smile, and I sent back, I love you too, Amy. Then, to my surprise, she messaged back, What is love anyway? I didn't understand what she meant, but before I can send another message asking this, she sent me a video of her with Danny, my best friend Danny. Then she messaged me, this is what real love looks like. Couldn't believe what I just saw. I immediately threw my phone across the room. I was so heartbroken. How could she do this to me? And with my best friend? I cried days and nights. It was horrible. I felt like I'd never be happy again. I rarely cry, so my family was really worried and tried every way to console me, but nothing they said or did could cheer me up. Worse still, I was dreading going back to school and having to see them together. They didn't make it easy for me. As soon as I got to my locker, I saw them there, kissing. Word got around that they were very much in love. So much for her ever loving me. It hurt so much. Danny didn't seem to bother that he'd hurt me. That's the problem with Danny. He doesn't think sometimes. He just goes after what he wants without a care for who he stomps on in the process. Plus, we weren't as close as before anymore. Ever since high school started, he'd been hanging out with some bad guy. I told him that Amy was a liar and that she would soon go off him. But he just shrugged and said, whatever. I know you're probably wondering why I stayed friends with Danny after what he did. I guess I'm too nice, but I just couldn't break our seven-year relationship over this. It was bad enough I'd lost the love of my life. I couldn't afford to lose my best friend too. Yes, I felt betrayed and angry, but Amy had made her choice, and it wasn't me. Then one night, I was on my way home on the metro. The only free seat was next to Amy, so I sat down next to her. At first, it was awkward, and neither of us spoke. Then I asked her, why did you cheat on me? She replied, well, Danny's the richest, most popular, and best-looking guy in school. I only used you to get closer to him. This was horrible to hear. I was so mad that I chose to stand for the rest of the journey back. The next day, I tried telling Danny what Amy had said. He told me I was just being jealous, shoved me, and yelled at me that I needed to stop being so bitter. We didn't talk for two weeks after that. I felt so lonely, but it turns out neither Danny nor Amy were the people I thought they were. Danny tried calling, but I ignored his calls. He also sent me some lame apology messages, but I didn't reply. Then one day, he showed up on my doorstep, gave me chocolate, and asked me to go for a walk in the woods with him. I took my GoPro with me. As I said before, I love nature. I always film the scenery on my walks. I asked him if he truly loved Amy, and to my surprise, he said that girls were like chewing gum. You had to chew till the end and then spit them out. He said he would use Amy one last time, then finish with her, then let his friends have her. Then he would move to another city and do it all over again. This was shocking to hear. I knew he could be reckless, but I didn't think the boy who saved my life when we were 10 was capable of being so cruel. I told him I never wanted to talk to him again, and I stormed off. My GoPro had been recording the whole time, so it was about time I took revenge on my shattered heart, wasn't it? Thing is, as mean as Amy has been, I still care about her. I thought about it a lot and eventually decided that she deserved to know the truth, so I sent her the recording. Even after seeing it, she made out I'd edited it to make Danny sound bad, as I was just jealous. I knew that her parents thought she was so sweet and innocent, so I told her that if she didn't split up with Danny, I'd send them the video clip. She tried to resist at first, but soon she gave up and begged me not to show it to them. 
I later found out that she'd continued to see Danny in secret for weeks after that. But eventually, she saw the dark side to him. She even came up to me at school and thanked me for trying to help her and apologized for hurting me. I didn't try to save her from Danny because I was feeling sympathetic toward her or anything like that. Instead, I believe that witnessing a crime is as bad as committing it. I guess that as mean as Amy had been to me, I didn't want to see her hurt, especially not by that jerk. Actually, after that, she's even reached out to me once and asked me to be her boyfriend again. But of course, I wasn't a fool. A leopard can't change its spots, so I made it clear to her that my answer was and would always be no, and that we should just stay friends. While me and Danny, we aren't friends anymore. I have other friends, but it's hard, as a part of me does still miss him, but I don't like the person he's become. Thanks for listening to my story. I hope that you guys don't go through what I did, but if you do, I hope you find the strength to do the right thing, however hard this may be. Hi, my name's Baron, and I'm 17. I guess that every student has at least one teacher that they hate, right? In my case, it's my PE teacher, Mr. Green. You're probably wondering why, so here we go. I'm an academic kid, and the sporty way of life just isn't for me. I actually enjoy studying, especially anything math and science related. I just don't understand why the school forces me to do PE. Spending hours jumping about in a sweaty mess just seems pointless to me. I could be using this time to read a coding book or something. I wasn't built for sports. I was the skinny kid who turned bright red just thinking about running. Then, during one torturous PE lesson, I couldn't jump over the horizontal bar at the boy's height. So the teacher lowered it to the girl's height for me, and worse still, I still couldn't jump over it. Humiliating! And after that, some small-brained boys nicknamed me Miss High Jump. Ugh, how annoying! Just when I thought it couldn't get any worse... In steps a new P.E. teacher, Mr. Green. Honestly, he was quite popular at school, as he was good-looking, muscular, and was a national medalist in the pole jump. Whenever he appeared, girls' squeals would be heard across the hall, and boys kept following him to ask about his diet and workout plan to get six-pack abs. Meanwhile, I couldn't stand him a bit. What's so good about that Hulk guy? Once I even spotted him checking out his reflection in his stopwatch. Pathetic. Mr. Green made the P.E. class hell. He always made us do these stupid exercise routines. Then when I messed up, he corrected me in front of everyone. It was so humiliating. Then he said, Baron, I get that sport is your weakness, so let's practice more and then you'll get bigger. Firstly, I didn't want to bulk up. And secondly, his actions made me a complete joke to my classmates. Why was he so strict with me? Was it because I was the only one not staring at him with gooey eyes? Great, as if it wasn't bad enough being called Miss High Jump, now I had Mr. Green to deal with. So, game on. It's time I hit him where it hurts, his appearance. I snuck into my mom's room and took one of her red lipsticks. Then I smeared it on his red whistle. And as expected, after blowing it, his lips were fully covered with red lipstick. It was so funny. Not so much Mr. Green anymore, more like Mr. Red. <laughs> Everyone was laughing, but no one told him why. Seeing his confused face was so hilarious. But then he went to the bathroom and seconds later he shouted. I rushed to see his reaction and OMG, it was priceless. However, catching me grinning at the bathroom door, he seemed to know who's to blame. Oops. After that, he was stricter with me. He always made me lug the training equipment for the whole class. Yes, only me. So I decided to get my own back. I poked some small holes in one of the tennis balls, then filled it with black ink. As expected when he hit it, all the ink inside went on his face and clothes. Ha! <laughs> he looked like an octopus. Of course, he knew it was me, so I ended up with a week's detention, but it was so worth it. That's when Mr. Green got determined to make my life a misery. He forced me to run extra laps on the field and made me attempt hurdles that I was never going to clear. And then he just smirked at me and said something like, Well, young Baron, practice makes perfect. The feud between us was endless. However, I soon had something much more important to care about. There was a new girl in my class called Susie, and oh boy was she pretty. It was love at first sight, but unfortunately, I wasn't alone in liking her. 
Whatever. The other boys might have the brawn, but I had the brains. So I spent hours thinking up ways to impress her and to make her mine. I don't have a lot of experience in this sort of thing, so I turned to romantic films for help. And I quickly learned that girls loved soppy gestures, so I put a love letter in her locker. I even sprayed some of my mom's perfume on it. Girls like fragrant things, right? But when she opened the locker door, dozens of letters like mine fell out. Another time, I brought her some cupcakes. I planned to get to class early and leave them on her desk. Only when I stepped in the classroom, her desk was already covered in cakes, chocolate, and drinks. It was like stepping into a candy store. I needed to change the plan. I'd have to think big if I was going to impress Susie. So one day, I asked some friends to go up to Susie and annoy her. And then when she freaked out, I would swoop in to protect her. You know, like a hero. Everything was going according to plan, and I was about to run over and save the day, but then Mr. Green suddenly appeared. He scolded them and even threatened to report them to the principal. They were scared to death and immediately ran away. Mission failed. I was about to leave when suddenly I saw Mr. Green grab Susie's arm and whispered something to her. Whoa, what a slime ball! Susie looked really annoyed, but he didn't give up. I was so mad I ran over there and yelled at him. Let her go, or else I'll report this to the principal. Then, to his surprise, I grabbed her hand and led her away. After a while, I turned to Susie and asked, Are you okay? She smiled and said, Yeah, thanks for helping me. Her bright smile drove me crazy. I stammered, y You're welcome. Uh, if he pesters you again, just tell me. And could you believe it? After that day, Susie and I became closer. She even texted me whenever she had problems with math, physics, or other subjects. See? Brain always wins. Then the following week, during another torturous P.E. class, I noticed Mr. Green trying to hand Susie a bottle of water. She wouldn't take it from him, but he kept on trying to pass it to her. What a weirdo. Fueled by love, I ran over to them, grabbed the water bottle, then said, She doesn't want it, so leave her alone. I led her over to the fountain to calm down. Then seeing how sad she looked, I said, Don't worry, I won't let him harm you. She turned to me and replied, It's okay, I don't think he means anything by it. Maybe he just cares about me. I interrupted her. No, he isn't a good guy. He wants you. She laughed and said that I got it all wrong, but I still felt worried, so I said, Today after class, let me walk you home. At first she refused, but I was insistent, so in the end she agreed. After that, I walked her home every day after school, and guess what? It turns out we got on so well. Time zooms by when I'm with her. I guess I should be thanking Mr. Green. It's because of him Susie knows who I am. But nah, he's a jerk. How dare he bug Susie? He was way out of line. He needed to be stopped. So one day I went to the sports hall where Mr. Green was arranging equipment, approached him and said, I know you like Susie, but she doesn't like you, so please stop disturbing her. If I report this to the principal, you'll lose your job. He continued to sort out the equipment, then smirking he replied, It's not any of your business. This made me so mad, so I yelled at him. It is my business, as I love Susie, and I'll protect her at all costs. He laughed. You're not in a position to talk to me about this. Come back when you're Susie's official boyfriend. What? How dare he say that? His words played on my mind. So that evening, I decided to go to Susie's house to confess my feelings towards her. However, as soon as I arrived, I saw Mr. Green standing in front of her house. He grabbed her hand and hugged her. How dare he? Anger took over me as I quickly ran over, pulled Susie away, and then to my surprise, I punched him in the face. I don't know who was more shocked, him or me. Ouch, my hand hurt. Before I could say anything, Susie shouted, Dad, are you okay? Dad, what was going on here? I froze and stared at them. Baron, what are you doing? You've got it all wrong, he's my dad. What? Mr. Green was Susie's dad? Well, she could have told me that earlier. We went inside and Susie got the first aid kit and patched up Mr. Green's nose and my hand. Then she told me the truth. Turns out her mom and Mr. Green used to date back in high school. But then her mom fell pregnant with Susie. He freaked out and refused to be part of their lives. So her mom moved away with her. But now they were back in town and Mr. Green was apologetic for how he behaved and wanted to be a father to her. But she was struggling to move on from the past and forgive him. Whoa. I couldn't believe I punched my crush's dad in the face. Talk about embarrassing. Although he looked more humiliated at the fact than me. A skinny boy with no athletic ability had actually made his nose bleed. That night I couldn't get a wink of sleep. Now Susie would never want to see me again and Mr. Green would hate me even more. Ugh, it was a huge mess. After that I tried to avoid Susie at school. As for Mr. Green, he stopped being so strict on me. 
Was he scared of Miss High Jump's punch now? <laughs> okay, I know, I shouldn't joke about this, but let me have a laugh. This man has just ruined his chance with the love of his life here. Then one day when I was tiredly walking back home, someone patted my shoulder. I turned back and saw Susie. To my surprise, she said, Hey, you promised to walk me home. Are you breaking your word or something? I stammered. I, I thought you hated me, so... She smiled and said that her dad didn't blame me either. In fact, thanks to my punch, they talked properly and now understood each other more. She leaned her head on my shoulder and said, Baron, thanks for always protecting me. Whoa, this day couldn't be better. The girl of my dreams didn't hate me, result. But I'm still scared to death of her dad. So basically, there are two missions that I need to complete. Firstly, I need to apologize to Mr. Green. And secondly, I need to improve my grade in PE class to impress him. The second mission sounds <laughs> near on impossible. So wish me luck, as I'm going to need it. Not to brag, but these are really tasty. I bet even Grace, my picky sister, would finish this whole thing in one sitting. My cooking abilities were definitely up there with Michelin star chefs. I took another bite out of a fajita when I heard noises coming from the living room. Ah, Grace must be back. There she was, sprawled out on the couch, surrounded by her handbag, heels, jacket, and other stuff. Grace, we've talked about this. I can't keep on tidying up after you. I have studying to do, I said as I picked up her things. Suddenly, Grace sat up, rested her head in her hands, then looked at me with sad eyes. An uneasy feeling welled up in my heart. Oh no, what was wrong? She sighed and as she glumly stared at the floor, she said, Easton, pack your things. We're moving out tomorrow. What? Again? I couldn't contain my shock. Why, Grace? Do you owe someone money again? Grace didn't answer, so I worriedly asked, how much do you owe this time? Seven thousand dollars, she mumbled. What? Seven thousand dollars? That's crazy. What did you borrow so much money for? I plopped down on the sofa in disbelief. I sat there, frantically wondering how to deal with Grace's enormous debt. Her extravagant spending habits had started after our parents passed away. I guess she was trying to numb out her grief with the latest must-have outfit. Then suddenly, she burst out laughing. <laughs> Come on, bro, I'm just kidding. Huh? I gaped at her. Grace, it's not funny. For an instance there, I actually thought we'd have to elope or something. She grinned at me. Um, if there's no debt, then why are we moving again? I followed her as she walked out of the room, took a piece of fajita, and popped it in her mouth. Then she began to tell me everything. Turns out she'd found herself a sugar daddy fiancé, and we were moving in with him. I frowned at her. So what, now you're marrying some granddad? Why do you... Without letting me finish my sentence, Grace tapped my head with her knuckle. Do you seriously think a beautiful and famous model like me would marry some old man? Yet, even as a famous model, you still can't afford all of your branded goods. Then you have to keep on moving house all the time to avoid the debt collectors. I winked at Grace. She was about to hit me on the head again, but I dodged it. Ha! The next morning, there was a knock at the door, so I opened it to find a good-looking man in his mid-forties standing there. Ah, turns out he's Owen, my future brother-in-law. Before I had a chance to say anything, Grace tottered over in her heels and wrapped her arms around his neck. Honey, why are you so late? I'm so nervous. Smiling, Owen said, Darling, there's nothing to worry about. Everything's ready to welcome you and Easton. They continued coddling each other, so I quickly walked away. Seeing them like that gave me goosebumps. Ugh, cheesy. Owen drove us to his house. Well, I say house, but it was more like a royal palace. Inside there was a classic design to the place, with a luxurious style. I spotted a girl about my age sitting on the couch. Her arms were folded, and she had a disgruntled look on her face. Owen looked at her and said, Vivian, why are you still sitting there? Come and welcome your stepmom and uncle. Vivian smirked and coldly replied, No thanks. I'm not in the market for a new stepmom, especially one who's barely out of high school. Then she stormed off, slamming the door behind her. Oh no, she hates me. Does she? Seeing Grace look worried, Owen, though obviously a little angry, still tried to reassure her. 
It's okay, she's just being a typical teenager. Give her a few days and I'm sure she'll be fine. As for me, I was a little... No, I had to admit that I was very nervous. Vivian's sharp-eyed look had made me feel uncomfortable. I mean, I think a tank full of sharks would have been more welcoming than her. Looks like my new home life wouldn't be easy. The next morning, while I was helping Grace take some pictures of her posing in the living room, you know, for the gram, she suddenly yelled so loud that I had almost dropped the phone. Hey, hey, take that dog out right now! Hurry up! I turned around and saw Vivian walking what looked like a white cloud across the room. Seeing that, I ran toward her and said, Vivian, please take it outside as Grace is allergic to dog fur. Vivian rolled her eyes and replied, This is my home and this is my dog. Then she smirked as she let go of the dog lead. Oops! Her fluffy cloud dog immediately ran over to Grace and started barking at her. Grace yelped out, grabbed the pillow, then tried using it as a shield as she continued to scream at the dog to go away. At that moment, Owen appeared from upstairs, and with an angry look on his face, he snapped at her. Vivian, get Teddy out of here right now. No, it's them who should leave, she argued, while her dog barked so hard that Grace huddled up tighter in the corner of the couch and cried nonstop. Vivian, you've been warned. If you do it again, then I'll have no choice but to find Teddy a new home. Owen shouted loudly. Vivian huffed out, then gave Grace a fierce look as she picked up the dog and walked off. Man, it was true that life here wasn't easy at all. And it was about to get a lot harder. The next day, I was rearranging my new room when I heard a loud noise coming from downstairs. I went to check it out and found Grace instructing two maids on where to hang a giant print from one of her modeling photo shoots. And laying on the ground was the picture of Vivian with Owen and her mom. Move a little right? No, a little left. Okay, Grace ordered them. I hurried over to her and asked, Um, what are you doing? She smiled. I'm just making a few decor adjustments. It looks far more luxurious now, don't you think? Then she picked a gray vase off the table and threw it into the trash can, then placed a double swan figurine in its place. Now that's much better, she rubbed her hands together. God, I know Grace was just trying to claim her position as host, but even so, she shouldn't have taken down the picture of Vivian's mom, if she knew. At that moment, a scream interrupted my train of thought. Vivian's. Sigh. I knew it. Grace, how dare you? Vivian blushed with anger. Then Grace interrupted her. This is my house too, and I have the right to put my mark on it. It makes the room look far more modern. No, you have no right. Take down that disgusting picture and put the old one back. This is my house, and your father will soon be my husband. So I can do what I please. So stop your childish strops and just accept it. Vivian resentfully picked up the family picture, then quietly took it up to her room. As a witness to it all, I have to be honest, I thought Grace was being outrageous. After all, Vivian's mother passed away not too long ago, so it was only natural to not accept the stepmother, right? But now Grace was messing things up and seemed to want to delete all of the images of Vivian's mother in this house. That wasn't cool. That evening, I was reading The Theory of Everything in the garden when I felt a pat on my shoulder. I looked up to see Owen. Easton, I'm just letting you know that schools are all set up for you. You start next week. Then he added, Ah, you don't have a car yet, do you? I shall ask Vivian to give you a lift. You're in the same class anyway. Wait, what? I was actually going to the most prestigious and expensive school in the area? That's a dream come true, but... I heard that all the other kids that went there were rich and influential. Could a poor guy like me adapt to the luxurious environment there? A feeling of uneasiness suddenly welled up in my heart. But then I told myself that everything would be fine. Monday morning arrived and I made sure I was ready early. I lingered around in the kitchen waiting for Vivian, but 30 minutes later and she still hadn't appeared. I started to panic as I didn't want to be late on my first day. That was the type of bad first impression that would stick. I was about to walk to the bus stop when I saw Vivian slowly coming down the stairs. She winced at me and said, Oh, you're still here. 
I suppose you want to come with me then? I didn't answer and just followed her to the car. As soon as I sat down, she sped away. I hadn't even fastened my seatbelt yet, which I then tried to do in a fumbled panic. Every time she pressed down on the accelerator, my heart skipped a beat. Then after some hellish ten minutes, she stopped the car. Whew! I was still alive. But hang on. This wasn't school. I turned to Vivian and stammered to ask her, but she cut me off. Get out of my car, and if you dare tell anyone how you know me, you will pay! Then she raised her fist to my face. Wow, she didn't have to be that aggressive. But fine, anyway. I didn't want to have anything to do with her either. As I briskly walked to school, I found myself worrying that this would be like it was in the movies, and I'd be teased for being the newbie. The school came into view, and damn. It was even more spectacular in real life. I took a deep breath to muster up the courage to enter the school. The grandeur and beauty of the place was so overwhelming. I was used to graffiti-covered desk and a jam locker door. Not here. Even the restroom door signs were expensive looking. I was wandering aimlessly trying to find my classroom when suddenly, I saw this girl walk ahead and drop something. I picked it up and called after her. Sorry, is this yours? The girl turned around then squeaked out, Oh my god, thank you. You're my knight in shining armor. I can't live without my glossy lipstick. Then she started doing this odd pose. Then she pouted and flicked out her hair. Was this a rich girl thing? It was very confusing, but hey, I guess she seemed nice. I smiled at her, then turned to walk away. That's when I noticed the groups of girls in the corridor. They were all staring at me, and one of them even winked. Then I overheard some of them talking about me. One of them said, Ooh, he's cute. And another said, It's about time we had a new hot boy in this school. Well, girls from rich schools were weird. I know I'm quite a good-looking guy, but I'd never had girls act like this toward me before. I chuckled inwardly and went to find my class. It seemed inevitable that my school life was destined to be rather, um, interesting. I've always been an overly possessive kind of girl, and I can't stand it if people touch stuff that belongs to me, especially if they do it without asking my permission first. And my boyfriend is no exception to that rule. Honestly, I was so worried that he'd cheat on me that I literally couldn't sleep at night. And then I did something that I'll regret for the rest of my life. I met Otis in the guitar club at school. He was tall, handsome, and smart, which made him very popular. But he's not a playboy. He'd only ever dated one girl called Sam before, who he broke up with last year. I often wondered if he still loved her, but I'd started to notice him always sitting next to me in the guitar club, and soon we were talking a lot. One day, he confessed that he had a major crush on me and asked me to be his girlfriend. I couldn't believe it! I was on cloud nine! But very quickly, I started to panic. I didn't want any other girl stealing him from me. I made our relationship very public and shared our photos on every social media platform. We were inseparable, and I always kept my eyes on him. Otis seemed fine with this. In fact, he thought it was kind of cute how much I doted on him. But none of that eased my obsession with the fact that he might cheat on me. It was all I thought about. So there was only one thing for it. I had to test him. I had to make sure he really loved me. I created a few fake social media accounts and used images of really hot girls to see if Otis would flirt with them. Then I tried to add him as a friend from these accounts and send him flirty messages. One time, I even sent super sexy photos to him from one of these fake accounts. Believe it or not though, he ignored them. I felt so relieved. So he did love me. I could relax. Well, for the moment, anyway. But it didn't take long for the worry to set in again. I'm not proud to admit this, but I even hired a boyfriend test service. I chose the most beautiful girl, even though the service was crazy expensive. I had it all planned out. It was just Otis and I at my house one night. We ordered dinner, and then I told him I needed to go buy some soda at the store. After I left, the girl arrived disguised as the delivery guy. She brought the food into Otis, and I sat in the car outside watching them on my phone. The girl had attached a mini camera onto the box of food, 
and she placed it on the table so I could clearly see everything happening between them. She was so seductive in her tight, mini dress and kept flirting with Otis, but he just wasn't interested. I sat in the car amazed. I was so proud of him. I had been sure he'd not be able to resist her. After that, I decided that I'd played enough games, and now I could really trust him. But then, one day at school, Sam and her new boyfriend, Lewis, walked past our table. She looked at Otis and said, You two look happy, don't you? I'm glad you finally found someone to replace me. Then she just walked away, without so much as even glancing in my direction. It was like I was invisible to her. So, she thought I was just some replacement, huh? That was it. I had to prove to her that Otis loved me now and that she meant nothing to him. Later that night, I texted her on social media, annoyed that she thought I was scared and jealous of her and that Otis only loved her? I couldn't believe it! I didn't know why Otis had dated someone like her before. I got annoyed and gave her a challenge that we would flirt with each other's boyfriends for a week and see whose boyfriend was a faithful person. She said it sounded fun and that she'd love a challenge like this. But really, I was only doing this to make sure Otis really loved me and had no more feelings for Sam. So the plan was set. That weekend, both Sam and I asked our boyfriends to go to the cinema, but then at the last minute, we both made up excuses about why we couldn't go, even though our boyfriends had already bought the tickets. I went to the cinema where Sam's boyfriend, Lewis was, and acted as if it was just by chance that I was there too. I asked why he was alone, and he said, Oh, Sam had a family thing, so I've been stood up. I told him I was on my way to buy a ticket, and he said I could just use Sam's. Yes, the plan was working. We watched the movie together and even hung out afterwards to chat. After that night, Lewis messaged me a few times, and one day, I even walked home from school with him. By the end of that week, it became clear to me that Lewis was actually interested in me and he even invited me out for dinner. But Otis was also still giving me lots of attention. He even told me about what Sam had been doing and was very apologetic. He kept saying it was really annoying, and why couldn't she just leave him alone? I was so happy to hear this. It felt like I'd won. Both guys liked me, and no one liked Sam. I decided to meet Louis for dinner and wait for him to tell me how he felt about me. Then I could tell Sam and she'd be so upset. Served her right though, for assuming Otis was still in love with her. But that night, things didn't go exactly as planned. We were sitting having dinner when all of a sudden, Lewis leaned into me and kissed me passionately. I closed my eyes and all I could think about was how I'd won and Sam had lost. But then I heard a click click sound and I froze. I opened my eyes, turned around, and there was Sam, standing there taking photos of us. She started laughing like a crazy person, and Lewis walked over to her and joined her. I had no idea what was going on, but then they told me. They'd deliberately done this. Sam had told Lewis to pretend to fall for me, just so she could catch me out. I couldn't believe it. How could she be so evil? She sent all the photos to Otis, and now I feel so ashamed. Otis was so angry, and no matter how much I tried to explain, he wouldn't believe me. And it's all my fault, all because of my possessiveness. What can I do to get Otis to understand I didn't mean it, and that I really love him? Hey, I'm Henry, and I'm a 23-year-old from Hamburg, and I have one question. You must have heard of K-pop, right? So, any K-pop fans in the house? Of course, I'm one. To be specific, I am an ARMY, a true BTS stan. Oh, and for those who don't know, stan is slang for when you're a big fan of something. Anyway, I can proudly say I'm obsessed with K-pop, and it's such a fun journey, right? But not everyone gets it. In fact, this is my story about how people treated me for being a fanboy, and it gets pretty dramatic. So, people always think that we like K-pop just because the idols are good-looking. But no, that's not only it. Seriously, I bet those who hate K-pop haven't even given it a proper listen. So you K-pop haters, just hear me out, and I'll start by tracing all the way back to the beginning of that life-changing moment when I first discovered K-pop. 
It all started when my classmate Chrissy was watching this music video called Dope during recess. I got curious and joined her. And oh boy, i never seen something so incredible before. The camera work, the choreography, it was unreal. I couldn't get the song out of my head, and the video was so much fun to watch. They didn't need hot girls nor supercars to make it eye-catching. It's pure talent only. After that, I started to listen to more K-pop and became a multi-stan, but BTS is always my one true love. I love them, and I wouldn't mind sharing all about it on my Instagram, which also helps me make friends with a lot of other ARMY from all around the world. Mostly girls, but a lot of guys too. And they often message me saying how much they admire me for being so open about my love for K-pop. They say they wish they had the same courage I did, since a lot of them got made fun of for liking Korean male artists. How ridiculous is that? It's 2021. We can like who we like, and we shouldn't have to keep quiet about our passions. However, I totally understood how they felt. I've been there, and it was rough. One time in high school, I'd been so excited to show Chrissy my new BTS album. We were screaming and squealing as I carefully flipped through each page as if it was my most prized possession, when some jock walked by with his crew and snatched it out of my hand. Then he said, what is this tween magazine? Didn't they all have plastic surgery, right? Then another guy said, why do you like these guys? Are you gay or something? Then they all walked off laughing. I was so angry I wanted to kick them so far off the earth, even Google wouldn't be able to find him. But I couldn't do anything. They were way bigger than me and would crush me into a pulp if I even tried. So I came up with a better idea. I started going to the gym. I wanted to be buff like June Kook. Then I wouldn't be afraid of any losers picking on me and my boys anymore. Oh, and by the way, I'm not gay. That's just another thing us fanboys have to deal with. There's nothing wrong with being gay, but just assuming I am because I like K-pop is silly. K-pop is for anyone and everyone. Anyway, after high school, things were looking up as people in college were less nosy. We'd all grown up, and you won't believe how muscular I'd become. Girls started showing interest in me, but there was only one girl I had eyes for. Her name was Kayla, and she was so cute. However, there was just one tiny problem. And by tiny, I mean huge. She didn't like K-pop. Once when we were studying, she sat closer to me and asked with a smile, What are you listening to? Then she took one side of my earphones. What is this? Some kind of chanting? Then she just went back to reading with a disgusted look on her face. What? That was my bias. Rap Monster was spitting fire. I didn't know she was that tasteless, but I let it slide this time, since I didn't want to make a big deal out of it in the library. After that, things got worse, and her hatred for K-pop became more obvious. Every time I talked about it, she rolled her eyes and changed the subject. And when the new music videos came out, and I couldn't wait to show her, she'd just scroll on her phone and ignore it. Other than that, she was always so sweet, and so we kept on dating but we shouldn't have. One time, we were hanging out at the mall, and it was a pretty special day for me as it was BTS's debut anniversary. I was so excited and had even worn my BTS crossbody bag with a Koya keychain to complete the look. I thought I looked cool, but Kayla burst out laughing when she saw me and said, OMG, did you borrow your sister's bag or something? I tried to explain to her and said, no, it's mine, and this is my baby Koya. But she just cut me off and rolled her eyes as she said we'd be late for the movies. She kinda killed my vibe, but it was BTS day, so I wouldn't let anything ruin it. We were lining up to buy popcorn when I felt someone tap me on the shoulder. Excuse me, I couldn't help noticing your Koya. Are you perhaps an army? I finished his sentence with a scream. We were both excited. We basically talked in gibberish that probably only army could understand. Turns out J-Hope was his bias, and his name was Craig. Then he even gifted me some photo cards he'd just printed out. I was so immersed in the conversation with him, I forgot Kayla was even there. Until Craig said to her, Oh, hey, who's your bias? I might have some cards for you too. Kayla looked offended and said, You guys are sick. What a pair of losers. I've had enough of this K-pop stuff. Then she stormed off. We were left stunned, but oh well. If she couldn't respect my hobby and love me for who I am, then fine. Good riddance, Kayla. After that, Craig and I went to a cafe to talk everything BTS. And until this day, we're still good friends, and I'm grateful he saved me from dating that awful girl any longer. After that relationship, I gave my love life a bit of a break, as I was busy with streaming music videos, voting for BTS on award shows, and catching up with all of their content, on top of studying. I was perfectly happy living my little fanboy life without any girl. But then one day, everything changed. 
I was on the bus to class because I wasn't feeling well enough to drive after a white night watching BTS's live stream. I must have dozed off because the next moment I woke up and I was leaning on some girl's shoulder. I quickly apologized to her and she just giggled. Then I took a proper look and oh my gosh, I've never met such a beautiful girl in my life. She was like a mixture of all four members of Blackpink. Luckily, I was smart enough to ask her for her number and offered to buy her a drink to make up for almost drooling on her shoulder. After class, we met at a Starbucks and immediately hit it off. Her name was Clara, and she was so smart and pretty. I gotta make her mine. So I decided to change my tactic a little. I would wait a bit before telling her I was a fanboy. And instead, I focused on finding out more about her first and making it clear I really liked her. Then, when the right time came, I'd share with her my passion for K-pop. Pretty soon, we got quite serious and did everything together, and I finally felt the moment had come. I was driving her home and decided to put my K-pop playlist on. To my surprise, she looked interested and asked what it was. I told her how much I loved it, and then nervously asked her, are you really okay with it? Because usually when I tell people, they make fun of me. She just smiled and said, okay, now it's my turn. Then she put on some death metal, which almost made my hair stand on end. She laughed and said, I know how you feel. Death metal isn't everyone's cup of tea either, but hey, we're allowed to like whatever we want, right? I respect that you love K-pop. Oh my gosh, could Clara be any more perfect? I can't wait to show her my room too. But unexpectedly, on the night I invited her over, her face changed as she saw all my posters and merch. I showed her my collections, my dolls, my pictures, but she just smiled and stared at me. Then she took my hand and said, Henry, this is really cool, but don't you think it's a bit much? I know you love them, but you should maybe start spending your money on stuff for your future too. Then she told me she wanted to go home. Can't deny that I was hurt, but I knew that she's the one for me. And she just needed a little time to really understand that this was more than just a hobby for me. So I was determined to get her to like K-pop. I started sending her songs and recommending her some Korean shows to watch. Once, I even pretended I was taking her out for a picnic, but I took her to an army fest. Clara went along with it all, but she didn't seem too interested. Then came the best news ever. I found out BTS was going to have a concert in London. I was desperate to go and told Clara about flying there for the concert. But she said, Henry, isn't that the same day as our marketing contest? There will be headhunters there and everything. You can't miss it. This is your chance to secure a good job. I didn't care and replied with a joke, but I've been waiting to see them my whole life. This is a dream come true. Who needs a job when you have BTS? I'm going to London, baby. But Clara didn't laugh. In fact, she got super angry and started shouting at me saying that I was so immature and that if I didn't grow up soon, she couldn't be with me anymore. She was even crying, saying she needed a responsible man who was thinking about his future as she stormed off. After that, she gave me the silent treatment. I was stuck in a dilemma. It was my biggest dream to see BTS live, but why did this feel so wrong? I decided to wait a few days to think it all through, and eventually I realized there would be other concerts, right? I really couldn't skip the contest. I mean, how else would I support BTS without money? I did need a job. So even though it broke my fanboy heart, I told Clara I'd skip the concert this time and go to the contest. Clara immediately grinned and said, Really? I'm so proud of you, Henry. Then she gave me a big kiss, and I reminded myself this was all worth it. And at least I still had my girlfriend. But suddenly Clara started speaking again. Henry, there's something I need to tell you. Um... Actually, Professor Geller has told me that the contest has been put off temporarily. So, this was just a test. Then she said she just wanted to see if I could figure out my priorities. She loved how passionate I was about K-pop, but everything needed balance, and she wanted to make sure I would take other parts of my life as seriously as I took K-pop. Then she handed me her phone and said, Look, I couldn't believe it. It was two tickets to the BTS show. She'd bought them for me. I was so happy I burst into tears and couldn't stop hugging her. I thought that was the happiest moment of my life. But the BTS concert was, especially as Clara was by my side. We're currently still together. And guess what? She even biases Jin now. She's seriously the perfect girl for me. And I can't wait to spend my life with her. If in 2031 you ever see a family of four screaming their heads off at a BTS concert, chances are it's me and Clara and our future kids. Don't be shy. Come say hi.
Hey beans, welcome back to my channel. I'm so cranked to introduce today's special guest, my daughter Elle. Say hi, sweetie. Hi, we're making butter from scratch today. I'm so excited. Elle, can you please do this properly? Mom, it's the sixth take already. I can't even film my arms anymore. If you're still not satisfied, then film it yourself. Hey, I'm Elle, a high school student living in Wisconsin with my mom. From the outside, there's nothing out of the ordinary about us. Well, except that my mom's a vintage-holic. See, she in fact became a famous YouTuber for her 1950s lifestyle. Living like this was such a hassle, but that's what puts food on our table, so I had to put up with it. However, sometimes mom even insisted that I join in her videos, like today. Ugh. Not just that, whenever we went out together, she made me wear the cheesiest vintage dresses, so I wouldn't ruin her aesthetic. As a hip-hop dancer, it was torture. See? I sure look way better in these clothes. Oh dear, what are those awful threats? Here, try this. It's really the bee's knees. Bee's knees, she said? More like granny. Ah, so pretty! Auntie, you have such excellent taste. That's Daisy, my cousin. And also schoolmate. Who gets along much better with my mom? Jeez, I can't let this hideous dress go home with us. If you like this so much, why don't you just take it instead, Daisy? Mom then walked to the counter with some more tacky clothes, ready to pay, but... Gee, where did I put it? <sighs> I guess I'll come back another time. Oh, missing something, Mommy? It's okay, Mrs. Faye. You're a regular, so you can pay us next time. Wait, what? No! So, now I had to wear this ugly dress to the boring event mom was dragging me to. Because the more the merrier. On the way there, mom was talking a blue steak about how I should behave at the bash. When suddenly, huh? What now? Awesome! This must be the third time this hunk of junk has broken down this month! Isn't it fantastic? And we don't even have phones to call for help! Elle, I've told you. It'd be ridiculous to show up with smartphones while dressing like this. Besides, people used to live just fine without them. Stop relying on them so much. Trust me, some nobleman will soon come to our rescue. Stay here and wait all you want. I'm gonna go look for a garage. But I only managed a couple of steps before a fancy car pulled over and an old man in a suit stepped out and offered to help. Turns out he's one of mom's subscribers and even asked for a picture. Thank you so much for saving my chariot. You're the ginchiest. Gosh, here she goes again with her old-timey slangs. Eventually, we reached this Anceville, and as soon as we arrived, Mom immediately ran to her celeb friends and posed for photos, leaving me lost and confused. While I was trying to navigate through this madness, some whispering caught my attention. Isn't that Faye? She's so extra! I can't even get past the first five minutes of her videos! Oh yeah? And still, Mom thought the whole world was her fan. I don't get why she wanted to be here with these fake people that much. I was not having any of that stuffy place, so I went outside to get some air. As I wandered along the street, I spotted a group of teenagers dancing to old school hip hop. This is right up my alley. But wait, ugh, this stupid dress. My jam is coming on though. So letting my adrenaline take over, I joined the crowd. Everyone seemed impressed and even made room for me to shine. Then one of them joined me. I was really feeling it when a familiar screeching voice startled me. Elle, what on earth are you doing? Agitate the gravel now. Then mom dragged me to the car and drove me straight home. Gringles, do you understand that if anyone sees you like that, the perfect image I've built all these years will be in ruins. <sighs> then don't drag me into these things, do it alone. Mind your manners. You should find something more practical rather than dancing like those good for nothing lazy bums. I'd had enough. Furious, I stormed into my room and stayed there all night. The next morning, I woke up to the rumbling sound of an empty stomach. When the coast was clear, I went downstairs to check the fridge for food. Ew, what's that rotten egg smell? Jesus, this fridge must be from Napoleon times. I reluctantly went for an instant soup, but the microwave wouldn't even heat it up. And guess what? My mom spent over $500 just for this thing's useless 50s look. Then I decided to put on a movie to blow off some steam. But the ancient TV wouldn't turn on either. Unbelievable. Is there anything in this rusty dollhouse that actually works? 
I need to get out of here before going insane. Oh, there's a new family moving in next door. Hang on, isn't that the guy I was dancing with last night? He smiled and waved at me, but I could only force a smile and nodded back. Hey, why the long face? If you're bored, come give me a hand. Then he dragged me over to his yard before I could reply. Once we're done, we rested on the front porch. Turns out his name was Royce. He'd just moved in with his dad and had enrolled at my school. I have to admit, he's quite the charmer. And within minutes, I felt comfortable enough to tell him about my unconventional life with mom. My mom has way too much free time. I wish she'd find a man. Only then she might quit nagging me. Meanwhile, my dad is always busy. If he had someone by his side, he'd want to spend more time with his family and be less of a workaholic. Wait a minute. So, how about we make them... A, a couple. couple! Today is the day. Our parents have really tight schedules, so planning out this date took a lot of effort. But so far, so good. I told my mom to check out this vintage-themed restaurant in town while Royce told his dad that he wanted some father-son bonding time. Then, oops, we accidentally bump into each other and join tables. Look at my mom, gracefully fixing her hair and acting all charming. <laughs> I winked at Royce and then we made an excuse to leave the table so the adults could have some private time. It's been a little while, let's see how the two are doing. Goodness gracious, was Mr. Phillips slurping on the spaghetti? He's making a mess and mom seemed really embarrassed. We immediately rushed inside to save this date before it's too late. At the end of the evening, we thought the worst was behind us. Mr. Phillips walked out without holding the door open for mom, making it swing back in her face. Gosh, every beginning is difficult, I guess. <sighs> Over the next few days, Royce and I beat our brains out to try and find a way to save their budding relationship and came down to this. Mom, I twisted my ankle during practice. Can you please pick me up? Hey dad, I forgot my wallet at the practice room. Could you pick it up on the way home? Then we waited until our parents showed up and went inside to lock the door and even turn off the lights for dramatic effect. I immediately heard my mom's horrified scream. Then the room went quiet. I bet Mr. Phillips calmed her down. We waited a few minutes before calling the security guard to open the door, but contrary to our expectations, the one being hysterical was Mr. Phillips. <laughs> who was now <laughs> sobbing in my mother's arms. Wait, what? Turns out Royce forgot that his dad, who always sleeps with the light on, is in fact nyctophobic. There goes plan B. This was bad. Everything kept going south and the clock was ticking as Royce's dad had to leave for another business trip soon. We can't accept defeat like this. There must be something your dad's really good at, right? I don't know, he's good at fixing stuff. Ha! <laughs> Then we know what to do next. While mom was taking a shower, I waited for my plan to set in motion. Three, two, one. Ah, Elle, help me. I ran over to her to see water shooting out from a broken faucet. After a couple of minutes of struggle, I called Royce's house for help, AKA Mr. Phillips. As soon as he arrived, he went straight into the bathroom and helped mom out of that pool. He looked way too cool, just like Superman. Now, time for his forte to speak up. As expected, he fixed it all in a blink, and mom even invited the two of them to stay for dinner as a thank you. Great! During dinner, Mr. Phillips kept praising my mom's cooking. He admitted that this coziness reminded him of the good old days. Seeing things escalate between them, Royce and I finished quickly and excused ourselves to give them some time alone. My dad's right. I can't remember the last time we sat together as a family. Then he told me that his parents divorced a few years back, and due to his dad's work, they were always moving from place to place, which really wore him out. Seeing his sad gaze made me feel so bad for him. I just wanted to give him a hug. Hold on, what nonsense was I thinking? I immediately brushed off that weird thought, and we chatted until late. The next day at school, I was talking to Royce as usual, when suddenly our conversation was interrupted. Oh my god, aren't you the new guy? How do you know him? Huh? Where did Daisy come from? And is befriending Royce something strange? Then she whispered to me that Royce's good looks hadn't gone unnoticed by other students. Wow, no wonder I kept feeling like we were being watched whenever we hung out at school. Daisy then proceeded to chime in between us and talk to Royce non-stop, even on our way home, when clearly her house was not in the same direction as ours. How annoying! But good news, back at home, mom seemed to be floating on air. I caught her humming along to love songs and she didn't nag me at all when I went to dance practice. 
Royce also said that his dad had been in a great mood too. Sparks were definitely flying between them. Our plan finally worked. Good job, sis. Uh huh? Was I really gonna be his stepsister? I should be happy with this outcome, right? But what was this uneasy feeling? One day at practice, I walked in on Daisy and Royce and immediately felt awkward, so I just rolled myself into a corner. Why did I react that way seeing them be so close? Is it possible that I've fallen for him? This can't be. We're gonna be family. There's no way this can happen. After that day, I tried to avoid Royce. Despite his new girl, he still bothered me, but I kept my distance. I was brooding all the way home until I heard my mom talking on the phone as I entered the house. And I'll bake you some pecan pie, darling. Wait a minute, Royce and his dad were both allergic to pecan, so who's she being all lovey-dovey with? The next day, as usual, I told my mom I'd go to practice, but actually lingered outside the house to stalk on mom. I saw her on the couch, video calling some strange man. Oh gosh, did my mom really cheat on Royce's dad? How could she? Still in shock, I glumly lurked to Graffiti Alley and spotted Royce and Daisy there. They seemed to be talking about something really serious. So, you already knew? Yeah, ages ago. But it's clear that we can't just force love on someone. So, you mean to just give up and happily watch them see other people? Oh no, so they knew mom was unfaithful to Mr. Phillips already? How embarrassing. Right at that moment, Daisy spotted me, so I frantically ran away. After school the following day, Daisy wanted to talk with me in private. However, it was not about what happened yesterday. Do me a favor and stop hovering around Royce all the time, will you? But Royce is my friend. I can't just stop seeing him because you said so. If you like him, be my guest. Suddenly, Daisy fell to the ground. Ouch! Why did you push me? Huh? What is she doing? At that exact moment, Royce showed up and worriedly checked on her. Okay, now I know what's going on. Sorry about that. Let me give you a hand. When she was just about to stand up, I shoved her. Now you know what my real push feels like. I noticed Roy's stunned look, but just walked off. Now that I don't seem so great in his eyes anymore, he'll stop approaching me. Sweetie, what's wrong? What's wrong? This is all your fault. If you didn't cheat on Mr. Phillips, everything would be fine. What do you mean? Cheating on whom? <laughs> then my mom burst out laughing after I told her. Turns out they never dated. They both saw through our matchmaking plan early on, but decided to just be good friends. And the person I saw mom video calling with was her boyfriend, but she hadn't introduced him yet because they'd only started dating. But why set us up in the first place? Finally, I had the chance to tell her how I truly felt about being forced into her vintage world and not being able to pursue my love for street dancing. Mom was quiet for a second and then said, Gee, how silly I've been. I've been inspiring strangers to go after their dreams, but I stopped my own daughter from pursuing hers. I felt so much better after pouring my heart out. I also mentioned Royce's situation with his dad, and she promised to talk to him about it. Hang on. This means... Mom, so you and Mr. Phillips are just friends, right? Immediately, I ran off to find Royce. As if on cue, the doorbell rang, and it was... Daisy! What game is she playing now? If she's here to mess around, come at me already. But surprisingly, Daisy apologized. I'm sorry, I was just blinded by jealousy. And there is nothing going on between me and Royce. He in fact already rejected me the day you saw us at the graffiti alley. Also, he asked me to give you this. I opened the box to see an adorable keychain with I love you on it. Oh my, is, is this a love confession? But there's also a note saying, I'm leaving for another city till we meet again. No, no, no! I sprinted to his house right away. Oh lord, he's already packing! Without thinking, I hugged him and started sobbing. So, you read my message? Y yeah And what do you think? I, I feel the same, but you're leaving for real? Then, his smile turned playful, and he admitted he was just messing with me. Turns out he was going away, but only for a few days, for a dance competition. Really? That's awesome! But I can't forgive you for tricking me yet. So, yeah. Although we couldn't get our parents together, us two actually became a couple, so our matchmaking scheme isn't a total failure, right? <laughs> we were even able to change a few things for the better. For instance, Mom spoke to Royce's dad, and he agreed not to move for the time being so his son could settle in. Mom also promised to check in on him when his dad's away on business. 
As for our family, my mom no longer tried so hard to act like she's not living in 2023. She now sometimes includes modern elements in her vlogs as well. And I even become a regular <laughs> guest on her channel. Hey Beans, today my fiance and I are baking this fab coconut cake, along with my daughter and our boyfriend. They are hip hop dancers. Check out their channel if that's something you fancy. They're really the cat's pajamas. Is it usual for you to sit on strangers the first time you meet them? This jerk. I'll show him that he's messing with the wrong girl. It's fine. Please don't hit him. Don't worry. And this is for mugging a kid. No, no, you got it wrong. He just saved me from those muggers. And he was just teaching me how to fight back at them. Oh my. I thought... It was just because the boy's bag was on the ground and that guy was holding his arm like he was about to hit him. I awkwardly stood up, literally screamed out to apologize, then ran straight home. So, as you can see, my home's a little different from the usual. My parents run a nursing home, so I grew up surrounded by the elderly. You were so embarrassed that you left him laying there and ran away? The first time I met my husband... I also knocked him over with my dolio chagi. Perhaps this boy is your destiny. Poof! No way, Mrs. Jones. Suddenly, my dad huffed past us. Oh no, I know that look. Something was bad. Lately, our finances haven't been so good. I went after him to check he was okay and found him talking to a man in the yard. On seeing me, the strange man waved me over. Do you know this person? Huh? That was the guy I almost punched earlier. That's right. The person you almost knocked out is my son. I saw everything, so I followed you here. He's got in with a bad crowd and lost focus on his studies. I want you to steer him in the right direction. I... I don't want to be a babysitter. I'm sorry. It's too bad about this nursing retreat, isn't it? Seems like it'll have to close soon. Although, if swayed, I don't mind being a major sponsor. <gasps> this was insane! So, all I needed to do was keep an eye on his son, and all the nursing home's problems would be solved? Dad said I didn't have to do it if I didn't want to, but how could I say no? Okay, I'll do it! So, which school am I transferring to? Jeez, everything here was so shiny. But if I had a choice... This would be the last school in town I ever wanted to attend. I entered the classroom and walked over to the only empty seat that happened to be at the back. I was about to sit down, then... Ah! Some dude pulled the chair aside and caused me to fall onto my butt. A hand appeared to pull me up, but as I went to grab it, it immediately drew back, leaving me sitting there embarrassed while everyone's laughing at me. Oops, sorry. I guess I should only give a hand when asked, right? Ugh, it was Blake. I quickly regained my cool face, sat down, and put on my headphones, pretending like I didn't hear any of those comments from other students about my rustic look. This girl seems interesting. The usual. A grand if you can win her heart in a month. Deal? Blake glanced at me and sneered at the guy. Easy. Deal. So that's how it's gonna be, is it? Luckily, I hadn't turned my music on yet, hence why I heard the whole conversation. Let me help you get some extra pocket money then, Blake. And it didn't take him long to start implementing his plan. At lunchtime, he enthusiastically led me to the canteen, guided me to get food, and even asked the lunch lady to get me an extra portion of yogurt. Nice try. I was trying to enjoy my lunch when a shrill voice sounded out. Get up and get me some food. I want a cupcake just like yours. Now! Jeez, why did some girls think it was okay to treat guys like this? Frustrated, I went over there, picked up the cake from that boy's tray, and shoved it into her mouth. There, happy now? Poor thing, your arms must be so broken that you can't get food yourself. Let me feed you then. You're welcome. Are you crazy? You're dead meat today. She raised her hand about to slap me, but I quickly dodged, 
causing her to fall to the ground. As for me, I calmly sat down next to the boy and had my lunch. Sorry for wasting the cake. You can have my yogurt if you want. He's Kai, my first friend at this new school. He's witty, smart, and has a seriously impressive academic record. He was actually here on scholarship, which explained why he didn't quite fit in, just like me. I noticed how Blake seemed rather annoyed and kept staring at me. I bet he was just fed up with being teased by his friends, since I just totally ignored him. Oh, but he didn't give up that easily. The next morning, he showed up at mine to pick me up, but I'd rather run two laps around the schoolyard for being late than share a ride with you. Then at school, he tripped me up and then reached out his hand pretending to help. But between you and the floor, I picked the floor. He even waited for me at the school gates with a huge bouquet of roses, but I just took one look at them, then started coughing. Are you allergic to flowers? <coughs> nope. I'm allergic to immature and boring people, like you. Then I walked off. Ugh, as if every girl was going to fall for these lame tricks. This carried on for the next few weeks, but then one time, he approached me in the library while I was studying with Kai and handed me a necklace. I looked at it, then passed it back to him and turned to talk to Kai. Seriously? You're turning me down for this nerd? Kai's smart, gallant, and sophisticated, unlike you. All you are is a troublemaker. Are you looking down on me? Oh, finally. I was wondering how much longer would it take for you to figure that out. Not to mention, you've not helped once with the English Lit essay. You're in my group, but you probably just think the Grapes of Wrath is a rock band or something. So, if I can finish that essay on my own, will you go on a date with me? Fine, but it has to score an A, else you can forget it. And my trick worked. Blake actually completed the essay on his own. He's smart, but he's neglectful of his studies, and it's made him make mistakes. On being handed back the essay, Blake's face fell. He got a B, and even though he knew it was over, he still stayed in class to reread the teacher's comments. It seemed like this was the first time he actually put in the effort to do something. <laughs> What's wrong? Still in denial of your failure? Blake turned away without looking at me. The rich boy who lost the game for the first time looked so cute. So I put a gift with a message in it on Blake's desk. Needless to say, he was over the moon. In it was a set of clothes I'd bought for him, and an invitation to a bar at the weekend. Why, you wonder? Oh, you'll see. That Saturday night, Blake showed up in the outfit I had gifted him, and looked anything but pleased. <laughs> I can't come in wearing this. It's so old-fashioned. My friends will laugh at me. You invited your friends, too? To prove that you won the bet, right? If you get that thousand dollars... Will I have a share? You already knew it? I was just joking at first. But now... Let's go inside now. Don't worry. We won't be here for long. I dragged him inside, and immediately, his friends didn't miss the opportunity to tease me. Did the fish get hooked? Yes, I'm trapped. Quickly give him a grand. His family is bankrupt and in dire need of money. Huh? What? You're lying. Look, he's wearing donated clothes. Even his branded clothes have been liquidated. I winked at Blake, and he immediately reacted. Lend me some money. I need a place to stay, a sports car, and pocket money too. At this point, his friends turned nasty and told him he no longer qualified to be in their group. You didn't have to do that. I already knew they only hung out with me for the money. But that's what people are just like. <sighs> Why would he think that? He must have never been cared for and loved properly. Get rid of that face. This is a date, after all. Let me make it up to you. A bar that matches this outfit. So I dragged Blake to our evening party. I told everyone that I brought a friend to lend a hand, and the elderly immediately made him do all sorts of things. Mrs. Hastings asked him to climb the tree to hang the string lights. Mr. Derbyshire called him to chop wood for the campfire, and Mr. Shaw wanted him to taste his home-brewed beer. Then the next second, 
Blake's already sitting on the drum throne. Ha! <laughs> it's been a long time since we had a young volunteer. That boy seems fine, doesn't he? I saw the way he looked at you. He's not suitable for me. I shrugged in response to her, and suddenly felt disappointed. Yes, I liked this different side to him, but we were still from different worlds. The next morning at school, I still saw Blake hanging out with his greedy friends. Looks like he hadn't learned his lesson. Frustrated that all my efforts were in vain, I swung open my locker. Hmm, what was this note? Meet me at the library at 6 p.m. when everyone has left. I have a surprise for you. B. I shouldn't be like this, right? Waiting for him at the library for hours until everyone left? Nervous and excited? But as soon as the last person left, the lights suddenly went out, and the library door slammed shut. What's happening? Could it be that the note wasn't from Blake? I screamed out of fear. That's right. I may excel at martial arts, but I hate the dark. With a shaking hand, I dialed the phone to call Blake, and then slumped down in fear and sobbed. At that moment, the sound of the door unlocking startled me. As soon as the door opened, I quickly ran to hug Blake. Are you okay? I can't believe Chloe did this. I told you not to get near them. Huh? This wasn't Blake's voice. Freya, are you okay? Oh my god, it was Kai who opened the door to save me. But I thought that... I quickly let go of him, then ran away in embarrassment. That's strange. When I was in danger, the first person I thought of was Blake. Could it be that I... really liked him? At that moment, the phone rang. It was my dad. Mrs. Jones had suffered a heart attack and needed surgery immediately. But the surgery cost was so much. Where could we get that money? Ah, oh, yes. Blake's dad. So I called him. Hello, is this Mr. Morris? Blake stopped hanging out with his friends and did his homework. I really need the money now. Please, it's urgent. Are you bringing me out to trade with my dad? My God. It seems like Blake heard all the conversation. I... I... So, I'm just your money-making tool? And all this time you've trained me as your pet? It's not like that! We'll talk later. There's no time for your selfish thoughts right now. I gotta go! I ran like crazy to the hospital. My parents were desperate, and the money hadn't arrived yet. So I called Mr. Morris again. You said Blake had changed. If this is the case, then why did he just get fined for speeding and resisting police? Don't ever call me again. Don't worry, Freya. I'll sell the nursing home land to take care of Mrs. Jones. Everyone's agreed to move to the government nursing home. We sold our house, and now we live with Mrs. Jones in a new town. She's so much better now, but I do miss the other elderly people. Also, I miss Blake. I still keep in touch with Kai, and he told me that Blake has gone to some military school like his dad wanted. Well, that's unexpected from him. You should talk to that guy. Not about what you did, but confess your feelings to him. That will save you from regrets later. Then she patted me on the shoulder to comfort me. But I really don't have the courage to do it. I was feeling guilty. Mrs. Jones, you have a letter. Freya, look. It's the invitation to a nursing home concert. It's our concert, isn't it? Trembling, I took the invitation. What is this? I pushed Mrs. Jones's wheelchair to the door of the nursing home named Sunflower. When we walked in, we all burst into tears. Everyone was there. This is all Blake's doing. He's such a kind boy. He found us and built us a dream nursing home. You and Freya were the surprise gift we prepared for him, but as soon as he saw the two of you, he ran away. Hearing that, I rushed to the gate. A car passed me. My gut told me it was him. I ran after it and shouted in despair, Blake, wait! I like you! I really like you! 
but the car quickly went out of sight. I helplessly slumped down on the street, tears streaming down my face, and I still muttered, I really do like you. What are you saying? Say it louder. I turned around startled. It was Blake. He was in his military uniform and smiling at me fondly.